and Mike show. And now, let's start the show. Munging on a dirt sandwich. BP. And his gas was on. William Preston. You can call Don and Mike anytime from anywhere in America. 877-365-3636. They're ready to believe you. Right? Hello. Oh, hi there. Hello. Hi there. Look out. Look out. Look out. Whoa. Oh, do you hear that in the, in the distance? Yeah. You hear that sound? He's coming in. So that mixing with those keyboards of Billy Preston? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you ever hear of when it goes down and Yeah, they have. The eighth wonder of the world! Your goddamn thing! But even he knows. Ta-da! And that's today, at least the beginning of the show, you're not the whipping boy today. I oh, know. It's those fine girls at the radio station. Oh, yeah. boy. Oh, hold on. Oh, Rob, it's Rob time. Right. Yes. Uh, let's How's, How's your? How's your? How's your? High definition John Madden hands. <laughs> like a burn victim. Yeah, that was horrible. Like, like Fred Krueger. Yeah. And before we get to our hee-haw honey, <laughs> good afternoon, Mr. and Mrs. Marino, and all the ships of space. Back after a lovely flight from Thailand, here's Don Geronimo, and hey, it's Mike O'Mara. Uh, yeah. I was just there for the sex change, though. Champagne and pate. The Donna Mike Show. Thank you, Robbie. Uh, new episode, everybody. You can tell by the smell. This is the Donna Mike Show, and it's a new episode on this. Monday. Monday. Monday 08 Hi, Donna Mike. Buzz Burbank here. Hi there, Buzz. Uh, let me see. You can call us. Just about any, any time, lines are open right now, 877-365-3636 from the United States and from Canada. We're also on the Internet. Go to our website, DonnaMikeWebsite.com. Just click on Listen Live, and right there you get us on the Internet. Uh, let me see, you can email us anytime, DonnaMikeWebsite.com. And we're on iTunes. It's uh, Don Ampersand, Don and Mike. Don and Mike. Right, right there at the very beginning, and you subscribe even though it don't cost nothing. And this means a lot to the company. They really don't care about the fact that you can hear the show being podcast. They just, for whatever reason, have been screaming at us saying, you need to get more people signed up for the podcast. Right. It's funny when you say something means something to the company. That always just makes me chuckle, just that statement, whatever it is. I mean, something meaning something to those heartless bastards is just an amazing concept to me. Because you know what? They, they say jump and we say how high. Of course we do. As always. Like the, the train seals that we are. But now it's branched out into many new areas. It used to just be get listeners, get ratings. Now it's okay, we gotta see a jump in the podcast, right? Yeah, get technology. <laughs> and it was finally explained why. Last week I, I did not know. They squeeze a commercial at the beginning of the end of the podcast. You don't mind. That is how they make money. Right. So the more of you that do that, the more people will hear the commercial and yada yada yada. So Hi and listen. I had a big, uh, a big weekend and and a lot to t uh, to get a, a lot to get to. You will have to bear with me for a second. I am as disorganized as hell, uh, Mike. You know I didn't get up to the office today. Yeah. No, you uh, you were putting a, a show on uh, that rapidly turned into something that uh, we determined we were going to put on the air. I, di I didn't get to to buzz. Uh, I didn't chat with Rob. I didn't chat with John. I didn't chat with Joe. Didn't do anything. You were I, doing I, a show. I got here. I mean, look at this. For goodness sakes. There's the office cigar. The office cigar that's unsmoked because you dove into this control board and, uh, and, and we, we just had a blast. And, and, you know, we were just, I was laughing out loud up in the office and right. I'm just delighted that this is going to see the light of air. Now mm -hmm. people will get a clear understanding of what you do in here mm -hmm. prior to showtime. Well, you did it Friday and you did it today. And so. also just how incredibly intelligent some of the girls at the station are. Mm -hmm. I'm blown away by the, well, we'll discuss it later, obviously, but the end result of this thing that they, they were clueless. I, I don't. I just. I, I'm amazed at that. So you got to bear with me for a second because the studio is not really set up. I got all the time in the world. <laughs> I'm I seriously got all the time in the world. I'm. I'm fine. I have no interests at all. I have no hobbies at all anymore. What's I the have score no hobbies. now, Buzz? No hobbies. What is I the have score no. It doesn't matter right what now. the score is today. I could care less. It was nothing. Nothing when I left. I could care less. 
for absolutely careless. I'll, Done. I'll, I'll Done for 2006. Enough. Enough pain. We lost four Still in a, a row. fan. Still a big fan. I'll be back next year. Red Sox lost four in a row. And remember, if I'm saying this, if they, you know, now if they have some miracle comeback, of course, I'd have to eat my words, but I don't believe that's going to happen. I am in a state of agony over okay. baseball. Hold on a second. I'm sorry. I, hold I on. Hold on a second. Yes, I'm no. Mad, I'm mad, I'm shut mad. up. Don't tell me to shut up. Don't get in a bad mood and start screaming about the Red Sox now. How can I not get in a bad mood if you yell, if you yell shut up at me? Shut up to you. There. How's that? You shut up. No, 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 you shut, up. shut up. There. Can't we all just get along? No. It sucks. It sucks. I'm sleep deprived and I'm pissed off. And I have every right to be, and I never come in here and say this, but I am. It's official. I'm no, pissed off never, at the Red Sox. You never say that. No, you've never been mad at the You've before. never been mad at the Red Sox I before, Mike. remember it happening. Goddamn bastards. Unbelievable, letting their fans down, destroying the franchise, bastards. I'm so pissed off. I am so pissed off at the Red Sox. It's not that they just lose. They lose after like four hours and 45 minutes and just agony, agony, agony. It just sucks. It sucks. And this is right. I, I was completely blindsided. I thought it would be competitive and it wasn't even competitive. And I had to endure all the Yankee phone calls to it. Just, oh, God, it sucks. It really did. You didn't like it. What? You didn't like it. No. No, no I, I didn't. I even promised you. Well, that's that's okay. I mean, that's supportive, Rob, but it's just, uh, you know, the Yankee fans are like, hey, 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 how you doing? Hey. They're going to suck again today. So today doesn't matter. I don't, I don't even, I don't even care. Okay. I don't even care what the score is. Okay. I'm done. I have to find new hobbies. I have to find a new hobby for the rest of the summer. Because the summer is over. What about August <laughs> August 21st, the summer is over. Completely over. Now, you know, I offer I you, drink. I offer you, Joe, I need you, unconditional, please. unconditional support. And I ask today, my friend, for the same thing. I don't want you to walk around rolling your eyes like I'm some psychopath where you're going, I need a drink. Like, I'm not even going to say anything to him. I need your support as a friend. Uh, That's all I ask. Uh, listen, it's Monday. We've got an entire goddamn show planned. Got the whole thing here. You, do, do you want this to be your meltdown day? Mm -mm. It's not a meltdown. It's just I had to get that off my system. I, I had to get that out of my system. I had to. I normally, I don't mean to be so selfish and self-indulgent, but today I just, I'm, I'm over. I just got it out at the beginning. I want to just get it out. I didn't want to wait. I didn't want to, I, I didn't want to wait. And I know that bothers you, but I, but I, but I got it out, and I'm done. I'm done. Well, if you're happy, that's the most important. Thing. Oh, stop it! As long, as long as you're happy. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> Jesus! I mean, really? As long as you're happy. Right. You know, I'm glad. I'm glad I know you, that's your mantra. I'm glad you. You're goddamn right, it is. <laughs> what? Well, now, why does it bother you that I come in and I just get it off my chest? Why does that bother you so much? Oh. Is it control? Is it because I dive no. in and you've got something no. planned? Is no, that it, what it is? Frankly, today it's because for the last 20 minutes, yes, we've been recording something. We right. were going to play it. We were all laughing about it. Right. We started the show. We're all laughing. Yes. Immediately, you do a right-hand turn. Right. And I see that you're not kidding. You're really mad about do the you want me to tell you? Do you want me to call you and tell you, tell you what's in my mind when I come in here after 20 years? Do you want me to do that? I'm just, I'm just, letting, it, I'm just letting it go. I'm just letting it out. Why does that bother you so much? <laughs> you can't control me. It, it's not a control issue. Yes, it is. Oh, Christ. It is, and I just came in to vent, and, it's, and, it, and it makes you mad, and I'm sorry. But I, but, I, but, I, but I got it out of my system. Well, that's most important. Now, can we go on with the show? This is the show. I got news for you. This is the show, too. There's nothing wrong with that. But, Mike, I don't want to have a serious discussion with I you. I know you don't. But I'm saying I'm just getting it off my system. Why can't you laugh at it? Why does it make you mad? Because it's easy. For, okay. Because you asked because it's easy for you to come in and do your part of the show and probably over the weekend not even having, not having thought about the show except the fact that you got to show up today and do the show because that's the way we do the show. What are you saying? What I'm saying is if I'm here doing all this crap before the show, which I don't mind, everybody's listening to this thing, we're playing along, I'm getting set up. I do have a goddamn outline, and we stray from it. And you certainly are allowed to have your say in the show. It's your name on the goddamn show. 
But we just did something that everybody thought was pretty freaking funny. Right. And even though I've got my own agenda of things that I wanted to discuss, I didn't play a bunch of tapes at the beginning of the show. We went right to the open. Right. And we were going to go right to that thing. Right. But what pissed me off is that you had to jump in first. Even I didn't, even I didn't do it. How often do I do that? A lot. I do not. A lot more. A lot more than you used to. Oh, wow. Okay. I'll never do it again. I will okay, never do it again. Okay. I, seriously. I don't. I don't. I, I, I'm don't. totally respectful in that way. There, there are a lot of times that the show will start and take I, I, in the last Yeah, and I've so. heard good things about that, too. I think that works pretty well. I think it works pretty well when that happens, when it's a little spontaneous. I think it's fine. There is nothing wrong with, with being spontaneous. Okay. This is rather spontaneous right now. Of course it is. Of course it is. And there's nothing wrong. But you're pissed at me. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. Sorry. It's good. Sorry, it's I healthy am. once in a while. It's healthy. I just, I come in here. Yeah. Okay. I do. I come in. I put my feet up and I don't think about the show all weekend. I don't. I do what I'm supposed to do. At least that's what I thought I was supposed to do. That's what I do. Oh, uh, go ahead. Go ahead what? I thought we were having a discussion. Uh, no, go ahead. I think you should just take over the segment. Take over the entire segment. Yeah. Go well, ahead. Now, you're that mad at me, so you're, you're not going to say a word and you want me to do all the talking. Because it's... It, it, it was, I'm going to sound dry for saying this, it was just, I sound like a chick now with sex. You, you ruined the moment of playing that thing that we had just got done re recording. In my mind, we had all been laughing and busting chops about this thing. Right. Up until 30 seconds before we went on the air. Right. We were laughing about this tape. Yeah. Everything was fine. We're on a roll. It's like nothing's prepared, but goddamn, we got this thing we just did. Mm -hmm. We get on the air, we roll, boom, I'm ready for it, and right out of left field. I screw the whole thing up. Momentum-wise, from my standpoint, right, I'm sorry. That's what I'm your saying. Momentum up. I'm that's sorry. what I'm saying. I'm sorry. It's like the first thing was even before we get to the tape. It was you know, oh, Red Sox, Red Sox, effing Red Sox, effing Red Sox. That's what I care about. You know, it is what I come in here. It's what I care about. Okay, Sometimes and, it's what I care about. And I guess what I care about is the show, even though. And I don't. You really don't so, think I care about the show? I think you care about the show. I don't think you care about it like I do, but it's not your job to care about it like I do. That's, that's why our arrangement has worked the way that it's worked all of these years. You like the spontaneous? Here's the spontaneous. Mm -hmm. I do like the spontaneous. The spontaneity of the show is a good thing. Look who's very quiet right now. Well, they're all like that when we do this. <laughs> that's the way it's been for 20 years, too. I hate when Mom and Dad fight. Right. Oh, we're not fighting. Okay. We're having a discussion. Having a discussion. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, you know, seriously, you think I don't think about the show. The way I understood that what was done before the show was I also a being... Divorce. There I been. said it. There I said it. Pay me some hell money and I'll get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> you, may, you can do that at any time. You make that arrangement, I'll get man on a skateboard. <laughs> Trust me. I will, you know, if you want to make that arrangement, I, I, that, that, that will be, <laughs> seriously, at this time, you know, it'll, that, that's fine. If that, if that's the way you feel, that's, that's fine. I, I accept the, let's discuss terms. I won't be using the guy that did my last two, though. <laughs> Cause I'm still sore after those two. I still might be experiencing bleeding. No, but also you think you say I don't think about the show. No, battered though. The thing that you did before that we're gonna I've that got, we're gonna play. I've got stuff that your other ex-wives didn't have. The, what's that? The mental cruelty. Mental cruelty. The mental cruelty. And I'll, I'll offer today. I'll offer today's tape as Exhibit A when you and I go to divorce court. Right. Right. Say so your honor. I'll take my chances. <laughs> I will take my chances. Your honor. In the court of law. Oh my God. No. Another thing you say I don't think about the show. I'm in here, and the first thing we're told before we go on the air is go in, edit it down, edit the parts out. And also, I know we had to get clearance for that thing to go on the air. And so I'm saying, hey, we, we need a few extra seconds here. I was thinking of that. I was actually thinking of that. But that's not the reason I did that. It's not like I thought I was going to kill the momentum. I normally, when I come in here and bitch about the Red Sox, I am normally the subject of much ridicule and much joy on the part of people that like to laugh. At the, the sad Red Sox fan. So, I mean, that's in my mind. Do you think I come in here and I'm just J and O? I'm over all my real emotion for that anyway, but I wanted to vent on the show. 
And I wanted to come in and do that because I know by laying myself out there that, you know, we'll get people that'll give me crap about it. It's not without, you know, you make it sound like I come in here without any concept for, you know, what's going on or what's, or what's, uh, I think about that every single day that I'm in here. I would beg to differ, but that's what makes the show good. Oh, I, I screw would... you. That is so insulting. Hold on, hold on. But you, I, that is I gotta, so insulting. i got to stand here and be insulted by you, and then I'm supposed to say, hmm, okay, that's a valid point. No, wait, how, how am I insulting you? How am I insulting you other than just saying screw you? By, by you saying you don't think that I think about, about what's think going it, on in here when we're in here? When the we're in here? When we're in here? Yes. Right. I wasn't talking about when we're in here. Right. I was talking about in general. In in general, over the weekend, really, how much time did you give? You know, let me explain to you. Let me explain to you clearly why you're not allowed to give me crap about that. And I'll say this publicly: you're not allowed to give me crap about that because you know, if you wanted me to do anything for the show at any time with any time constraints at all, all you would do is ask. And in years past, over a very long period of time, as you mentioned, the show has evolved into a certain way. You, sir, control hey, everything about this show. Start it with me. You control everything. And if you're How's telling me if you're going to you? use How does that work out for you? How does it work out for you? Worked out pretty good for me. But I think I, the but partnership has worked pretty well. I agree. And, and it has worked great. But my question was, how's it worked out for you? I mean, you're going to really start effing with me today? I am not effing with you other than you're you saying to me. Are, you are saying to me. You I are saying now, to me. I am the second time trying to move past this goddamn thing. Well, then thing. don't sit there and indicate to my listeners as well. To your listeners? Yes, yours and mine. Okay, don't your introduce, listeners. Don't, don't, yeah, see, that's, that's funny to you, isn't it? Yeah, I wouldn't say that to you in the middle of a fight. But you are dick. saying to me, you're a dick. You're saying to me, you know, you want me to I'm leave, I'll leave. You want me to go, I'll go. We'll figure it out. I swear I to God, I support you 1,000%. As I do you. Then be a man and stay in the room. Strap I will it stay. on. I, I always strap it on. Strap it on. Bring it on. I mean, you, you're the one. You said that. What I resent. You said, I want to say. What I, you know I'm, what I resent. I am sleep deprived. I'm angry. I am. I have a right to be angry. Right. Over the Red Sox? Yeah. On a good looking Monday? Yeah. You don't understand that? Yeah. Yeah, it, uh, it, uh, partly. Do you ever get angry do, about do, things that don't matter? Of course I do. Do you, okay. under, do you understand that maybe on a Monday when you know I'm loaded with stuff to talk about. I have no idea. Do we have a discussion about we? I I don't know. On Monday, don't I always don't I always talk for an hour on Monday? I yes, you talk for an hour on Monday. You talk for an hour uh, every, you know, day, every yes, day. Every day, say it every day. There well, you, you I mean, I have no problem with that. I've never but had I mean, a problem with that. Even in that regard, I, I mean, you've got to be cognizant of the fact that on a on a Monday after a weekend, I've always got. At least an hour's worth of crap to talk about, right? So it's not like we're coming in to today's show, running on empty, thinking, "Hey, we can just throw anything out there at any time." This is Mike. What we're arguing about now is, is frankly, a, a radio logistical setup that I already tried to explain to you about momentum. And when I said you don't think about the show, what I meant is you don't think about it like that. Mm -hmm. And I maybe I don't. Not, I'll give you that. Not I'll the, give you that. I don't mean that as a... As no, a, I know that's not an insult. As a put down. I mean, no. like, on the way in to work today, I I think about things. It may not show on the... I think about things like, huh, what would sound good here or here or here? And we're doing this thing before the show. And I go, oh, I better clean this up, and I better make sure that we get right on the air and get this thing right on. I mean, that's what I meant. I think about things that, that you have the luxury of not thinking about. But... The luxury is something that, you know, I, I have always been here to offer whatever support and whatever help is required. You prefer it this way. And I, I went, when you, when you, when you come Agreed. to me, when you come to me and you say it like that, Agreed. you and say it, it works, publicly. And it works, and it works that way. It works for both of us that way. I think the show is successful this way. I think that's good. And I am also comfortable. But I am also, when, you know, it is by design. It is a decision on your part. It is a decision on my part. That's the way. And when it said that, you know, I don't, it, when you say it the way you said it, it comes across like I'm like, hey, whatever. I could give a rat's ass about anything that's going on. And you are speaking in general terms. You're, you're taking one thing that was said. Okay. And do you understand why I'm sensitive it. about that? As, as a person that comes in here and, <laughs> care, and cares about like our future as far as the way we're, we're, we're doing the show. 
No, I don't understand. Okay, what it is is when you say that to me, it's like you can come in here and, and not have to worry. You're telling me that I don't think and care. Uh, you know, It's sounding like I don't care about the show, and I'm telling you that, that in years past, we punched through that, that we both were caring about the show and what would happen on the show, and that my decision to lay back and do nothing is a decision on my part. And, and because you respect me enough, we have always worked that through. But over the years, I have to tell you, and if we have to do it publicly, because that's the way you do and air a lot of your dirty laundry, I'll do it to you publicly, and I'll tell you that I do it because I think that's the right thing to do, to work with you. That's why I do it. Because seriously, I don't think about the show, but if you wanted me to think about the show, and if, you, if I thought it would be work, okay, work now, better with us... now stop for a second and let okay. me talk. All right. You're right, the show works because the way it works. I tell other people on the show stuff that you don't hear. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I'm not like being fast time to Ridgemont High, like Damone, you know, should hear what they say. Mm -hmm. What I will say to someone is, Mike doesn't have to be here, because Mike's only job is to show up at 3 o'clock and be funny. Mm -hmm. By design. That's the way we've set it up. By That's design. we've set it up for years. By design. I tell everybody in the world that. Yeah. Everybody. Hold on. I mean, that is the way it has been. That is the way it's been going. And that's the way it's been going for 15 years. So, when you are truly spontaneous with something about your personal life or your Hispanic attacks or whatever, in my humble opinion, an that's, amazingly good sign that's that I'm really not great. having. It's a good thing that I'm not having one now. That's great radio. Right. Now, big picture from my standpoint, when we're jammed up on a Monday, mm -hmm. and the Red Sox lose four out of five, right? Okay, yeah, you're allowed to say it, but then it's like you announced right away that you were mad and pissed off and sleep deprived, and it's going to sound weird coming from my mouth, but it's like, oh, but you, you're Mister Negative today. That was because we didn't talk before the show because we right. were doing all that other crap. Right? It's like right away I thought, oh. I don't want this today. I want to have. A, I mean, I want to have a good show today. Well, you know, sometimes I come in here, and you know, it can be any one of us that's in a, you know, has something going on, or everybody, or somebody's down, and it gets on the air, or something like that. And it, and it, that's the way it is with live radio. It goes that way occasionally. It happens, you know. And really, as I as I said to you before, I cannot come in here every day and and do you know and be who and you know you're who you are i'm who i am and come in here and you know and, and to be honest with you at the beginning of the show i threw that out there and i vented and you know, because, and because you because you got upset that i vented it made me more upset no, but hold on and, and I, I can't help it now that i've got my breath let me just stop you for a second as well when you mentioned one of the things when we were being petty you said that you know you were opening up more and you said and i'm getting good good response to that well my answer to that would be uh, respectfully, uh, dumbass, who's been who's been urging you for years and years and years off the air to open up? You know, you can't say really respectfully have. and then say dumbass and expect that, said, that doesn't work that, that way. That was said with said with love. Doesn't bother me. I I think no. I yes, you have been to telling me so, to open so up. I've got no problem with that. What okay. I'm saying, it, it was just the one day today. It was just today. It just it was. Today, I don't but know today, why. But when I came down into the studio and we were doing the thing, we, what I don't understand, here's what I understand. I understand all about momentum. And I, but what, why, if I, in particular me, if I have a little rave out, haven't we had rave outs, you and me, over the years before, and in the next segment, made a complete transition or gone, or not in the next segment, even within within the same segment, yeah, and but gone in to play something that's particularly funny, and then if we don't get to it, the we get to it the next time. It's kind of a rolling thing that we do. But, uh, uh, Mike, that is the crux of, of my entire argument, which I, I don't think I've been able to get over the year, is the fact that it is momentum, that we were goofing with the ladies from the station and calling them and recording them and, right. and screwing around with them, and we did it right up until one minute before we went on the air. Right. That's what I was going with, and that's what I thought everybody else... And I caught you by surprise. ...was going with, yes. And, it, well, I did. <laughs> I did. Okay. I caught you by surprise. There's nothing, you know, there's nothing that I can do about it. So I now can't, go, please I go can't home. take it back. Go home. I'm not going home. You said you would go home if I asked you to. Uh, no. Well, well, I didn't mean it. There you go. <laughs> Screw you again. I didn't mean it at all. 
No, I like it here. It's good. This is better. You also hurt me, you bastard. I didn't. What did I say? That you, oh, well, we you, hurt each you, other. You said to me. You We've said, done uh, this before. Hold Have on, we not on, done this on. in twenty you years? Said to, you said to me. Uh, you know, when I said kiddingly, I want a divorce. You said any time. You name the alimony. You name the alimony. I mean, you know, really seriously. Hey, I'm a, don't start talking about divorce, okay? Don't start talking about divorce. I didn't set a separation date, okay? You did. You did, man. It's you called did. retirement. I understand. I understand. But I hate to play this card with you, but I will. What? What? Now, what card are you going to play? I is it going to be before you say? Before you say it, is it going to hurt me? Is it going to hurt me? What you're going to say? I hope so. All right, go ahead. I certainly, and you know this, could have walked away a year ago. Oh, oh, yes. You know that. Oh, oh. You know? And I said, I are, Mike, I, what the, what's I the F Mike supposed to say? I said, Mike, you're my best buddy. You're my partner. You know and what? Now, you want real? Oh, wow. That's friggin' real. Okay. And I got nothing to say. All right, okay. Then we're square. Then I'm sorry. All right. I, then I'm I'll sorry I yelled at you. Oh, boy, there's nothing I can say to that. There is nothing I can say to that, you know, really. See, there you go. So, I'm so sorry. So, how about this weather, huh? How I'm sorry, it? and I mean that sincerely. I'm sorry also. And it was not my intent to get into a ball-busting ego fight with you today. You know, I mean, absolutely to the contrary. I expected to come in here, and so I was certainly going to vent about my my little team from up north, but I didn't expect it would escalate to the uh, level, but uh, in some small way, a at a certain point, you know this over the years, occasionally one has to just let the gas get open, you know, and believe me, if you think you're the only one, you know, you're in error. I've been, I've been slightly difficult to be around, and it's not just because of the Red Sox, it's because of a variety of things, but it's also, you know, that was the culmination of things and that's uh, I, I vented so I well I'm sorry as I well am as sorry anytime you, I mean listen I don't come in here to I upset do, you I come in here I, I've spent and the, me with you I come in here to to make what you do which is the workload of the show as easy as I possibly can for you and obviously I did not do that to the best of my ability today and for that I am sorry but on the other hand to be honest which I hate when people say because it indicates they're not being honest with you. Right. I would say the fact that you drug us through this incredible 28 minutes of barbed wire ended up being what I would classify it. I, if I had done it when I got in my car at the end of the day, I would have eh, well, it was a pretty good first segment. So thank you. I, I, that I really do believe. I really, really do believe. I mean, I really think that even when we do this, even though the faces around here, when we do this, it's the you know what? worst. You're all pussies. Part. You're really all total pussies when Mike and I are fighting. Thank I mean, you. either take sides. <laughs> I heard of thank you. Either take sides or leave the room if you feel uncomfortable. But don't just sit there like dogs with your faces down. It's I mean, always been that way. You know what it's like. They used look to, up. Look they up in the to, eye. You, you remember, in the, I mean, in years past, we'd have a few off the air. Me and Mike and are the only one looking at each other in the eye. They'd have them. Do you remember when we would do it off the air and they would actually they sit? They'd all run out of the Seriously, room. Seriously, people would go to different parts of the building. Because that would be, you know, the top of the lung stuff. There was one time where you and I were just sitting there, I think, in a production studio, going back and forth, going, F you, F you, F you. I don't, look, I, here's the thing. I, I'm, I'm fine with you and me. I'm, I'm very, very good with you and me right now. I got my point across. You got your point across, including the, you know, the coup de gras, which I, I have to give you credit for. Well, and, me. you know, there was the follow-up to that, too. What's that? The, you know, I certainly don't mind the fact that you come in as you do and and wing on the show as you know the funniest guy that I ever met right because you do, you do have a side business <laughs> that does take up some of your time and even sometimes golly during this job oh there would be, no there would be some days when I come in and it would seem that this might be your second job <laughs> Oh, jeez. I mean, all fear, all right. it might seem that way sometimes. So from my perspective, like when I said that You know, about, I'm glad you're doing this. I'm glad that this got to the 
the civil level, you know, that this didn't, that that didn't come out, because that could have come out in a much, much worse way. Yeah, I and know. I'm glad that it came out this way because you know <laughs> that that would stick with me, and I'm not. Oh, <laughs> oh, Jesus, God, I, know. I can tell that you, you know, you've honed your skills over a period of time. Her name is Frida. God Almighty, she was a master. I mean, I'm I, taking one down. Well, going right to the pressure point. Oh. But I'm glad I said what I said. I mean, I really do. I, I just, uh, you know, I do care about what happens here. I do. I do give a sh I, uh, I didn't say it, but I do give a, an S about it. And, uh, you know, and, and the thing that, the most important thing, Damone, and I have to tell you this. Yes, Damone. And do they say it a lot? And they say it a lot. They really? Lot. You know, I answer people honestly every time they give me one question. One question I have been asked more in the 20 years of doing this show than any other question, that question is, Where's the so, no, mm -hmm. what time do you guys get there? Now, now that is a logistical question. You know, what time do you, how, how much time do you guys have to prepare? Right. And I answer them honestly. And I said, I can seriously get there at, <laughs> not at 9 a.m., I can get there at one minute before three, and I know that my job is to react to everything we have here. Now, as an individual with a sense of pride, that is always, you know, I give them the honest answer, but it also, you can know. I, can I stop you there for one yes. second? I mean, I like the so fact that on, I'm a I happy just, clown, but it's also, Just stop you, know, you for one second? If, if, if we are really now you and I talking. Yes. That's something that, uh, I don't, I don't hear you say that on the radio very much. What's that? What you just said. That, that I don't do any of the show prep? Yeah, well, I mean, not just, not in so many words, but the way you just said it, you said it much more eloquently. I mean, which is the, exactly the way that I say it to people, which is what I say is where Mike and I have un a unique relationship. I couldn't work with somebody as type A as me. Well, Mike is pretty type A, and I look at our relationship like uh, we're co-players on the team. And well, I tell and you, you've always time, given me, uh, and you know what, and, and, Mike, because, and I tell people Mike is the star player on the team. We don't, you know what, we don't probably give each other pats on the back more. It, we really don't. We don't do it with each other. We've, we've had that discussion over the years. I probably looked at you and said, hey, how about that, you know, a little, and you say, why? Because you've given me that, you know, that, that, that co-captain status for, for years. And I also probably don't give it to you because, I, God, my feeling in my head is why do I, you know, why do I need to? You know, you, but you need it as well. I think we both need, we both need, acknowledgement of what is done and i mean you know i mean when you brought up that last as i will hence refer to it in this fight as the coup de gras you know that you know that the fact that you did come back after all that crap and i know that you wanted to you thought about it seriously and i know that your primary motivation for doing that was everybody that works on this show probably especially me and I appreciate that. So, you know, I, I truly do. I mean, I know that it's frustrating for me because sometimes... I'm glad, I'm glad I came back, incidentally. Uh, now I'm, I'm oh, glad I know I, you are. Now, I know, now I you're, and I know you're happy when you're doing this. I know you're, you're, you're real happy. And I will go one step further. When I say that I have capabilities and I could do whatever you would ask me to do, I mean, I mean that. I mean, And you know that's true. I could. I could, you know, but I also think the way this system works, it works very, very well together. It works well the way this goes, and I've never ever demeaned you for that. Or, and I or, would, and I would, I would say to you that your chance is when you start improv -ing. You know, when when we get into something mm -hmm. and and you get going, uh, you know, nothing makes me happier, uh, really, than to hear something off the air or come up with something and be able to just give you a nugget of an idea. Mm -hmm. Just like, and I say that I'll say it to Mike like. 20 seconds before we go on the air, you know, okay, it, it, it's going to be Bush doing this, this set up, this set up, boom, boom, boom. Then we just go on, and we fly with it. I know, I know, and it's good. We freaking fly with it. Mm -hmm. That, to me, that's what I always tell people. I say, that's where Mike makes his money, you know, and that's, and I use the football analogy. It's like, we, you just, you ride up in the line, and you line up, and you say, okay, just get open. Mm -hmm. And all I got to do is throw the goddamn ball, and, right. you ca and you catch it every time. Right. I mean, right. Damone, this is what I say about you, and mm -hmm. I do say it a lot. Well, and, and I and I appreciate. I that. do, Damone. I, I appreciate that, and perhaps, as you said, 
I don't say it enough on the air, and, mm. and I don't, and I really don't, because I think I buy into the persona like everybody else buys into the persona, although, you know, behind the scenes, you do things for me that people don't know you do for me also. You know, I mean, let's let's be serious. If we're letting it all out on the table, when I had we joke about the Hispanic attacks, but you're the first person that said to me, "Hey, chill out. You know, don't worry about it. Get get you know, get yourself together, get yourself healthy, and take care of yourself." And you meant it, and I knew you meant it, and uh, that you know, I, I think you would have done that before or after. I mean, you right. before or after you came back. I think that you know, who knows? But it was you know, that meant a lot to me too, and it and it does, it did, it really did. Okay, good. Well, I. I now what? Now what are you faggots looking at? <laughs> I'm not talking to you, Mike. I'm talking to the rest uh, of the faggots. We can't take our eyes off of you now. Well, do you? Do you not look agree? At, look at the only one who's handling this the right way, Joe. Joe's, Joe's, on, back Joe's on some fantasy football website, right? Good for you, Joe. Good for you. Way to go, Joe. Norman. You're the only one that passes the test. Well, anyway, <laughs> it's uh. I type and I got to do my job. You know, it really is interesting, isn't it? It sure is. <laughs> who's, who's your agent? Who's your agent? Now, we back yet? So I, I'm very, yeah. Are we on the air right now? He's vigorous. This has been on the air, actually. <laughs> but, uh, hold on. Uh, all I know is that Mike and I were talking to the tech guys. Uh, <laughs> and we went to break. You know, can I say, though, seriously, <laughs> even with, with the state that I came into the radio station uh, today, not Hispanic attacks, not anything, that, that, that thing you were doing was the first laugh the first legitimate laugh I'd had today because we all we didn't enjoy it and I know you were hot to trot to get that on the air and I hope that you know th did they clear you, it did they clear it yeah we got it I mean that's why I was right that's why I was even more mad at you because mm -hmm. I was trying to show you I was holding the disc going right and meanwhile you were screaming you know I wasn't looking at you I was no. I was no. I, my eyes were kind of you know spinning around in my head Okay. And I'm not gonna, you know, if I, if I go down that road again and tell you why I was doing that, I'm gonna ramp myself back up again and I don't care to do that. I really don't care to do that at all. Well, at, uh, at this point, Butchy Boy get it out. Huh? No, I did. I, I got mean, it out of my affection. system. Butchy Boy was affectionate. I got it out That's of my what system. Bozo used to call his buddy. I, you know, I'm mad at myself for, for, and not, not about the show or anything we've been discussing. I'm mad at myself for, for buying into it and putting the emotion into something that does not matter. But all sports fans, all passionate sports fans, right. See, here's have the same crap, and it okay. just sucks. All right, now it sucks. Now, okay, now we can ramp it up a little bit because now we can just talk about the Red Sox. Yeah, I tivoed uh, the sports reporters, right? Because that's kind of happening, guy. I am, mm -hmm. and I was watching uh, that tool, Bob Ryan, from the uh, Boston Globe. Yes, ultimate sports cynic, right. but he's a good writer. Great weatherman. Great weatherman, yeah. Seems to me he got it right. Uh, he was screaming about the Red Sox fans, talking mm -hmm. about how the Red Sox fans are all going nuts. And really on the, on this set where they have these four sports reporters sitting in large, in, in big, gigantic stools. Right. They, um, he's, uh, he's screaming, we won it! We won it two years ago! Right. We've got the best prospects for next year! Shut up, you're not persecuted anymore! You're not persecuted. Every Red Sox fan can no longer wear this on their sleeve. He's right. Saying we're persecuted. He's right. Shut up about it. He is right. I mean, that's not me saying that to you. That would. He's be... right. But it, there's. Shut up. You can't change that history. You, you can't change the the mindset that lasted before that. Yes. I mean, the fact is, and it's because it's those guys. It's because it's the guys, and it's the it's the biggest rivalry in baseball. And maybe also, in, I think it's the biggest rivalry in all sports. And also, my really now now as someone who doesn't follow baseball, but I, I follow sports. It was the it leads five games, four and a half. Okay. Before this game, and I don't want to. So I'm going to assume they lose, so we'll say it's five. Yes, yeah, so we'll say it's five and a half. Say so it's five, five, five and a half. Right. It's August twenty first. Yeah. Well, it's also and look, I'm not going to tell you. Get it? They play I'm again not, at the end of the season. I'm not going to go into detail about all the other things. It was just the combination of everything. It was a combination of you know a a a week that I had. I had I had myself a little week, and also uh, it's going to be a good little Saturday. <laughs> going to go to the Home Depot. I had a bad week, <laughs> followed up by. The, it was the, you had a bad week last week. I had a very bad week last week. Why? Uh, other other matters that I'd rather not discuss. I, I really, I mean, I know if your you, other job. Uh, yeah, my other job. My other job could have gone better. Could have gone much better. And that followed up by, and you kind of know what I'm talking about. 
you know. I know. I'm just just laughing about yeah. it. Yeah, the, 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 yeah. Your other job. Yeah, my. I'm, I'm glad that you were able well, to. Well, I have to. I have to have that. I have to. You know, really to keep it together for this job. I have to prepare. I do. I mean, part of that is I. Have I know to you're thinking about. The I'm not a radio, you know, guy like you are. Where you know the the fact is that the you know I. I oh jeez. No, <laughs> no, no, no. That's you had a bad. Day. I didn't load this. Yeah, God damn it. Yeah, this is like sending the clowns. F that. Boy, put it in the machine, boy. Yes, I, I prefer you doing that than sitting there looking peeking. I, I think it's, it's the eighth wonder of the world. But it was, and when I mentioned sleep deprived, it was like the hours that these games go. You know, the world's I think what the the record for the longest four hours nine inning nine inning game ever. It's just you know, but I'm fine now. <laughs> Good, yeah. I am. Mike, as we say goodbye to you on this edition of the Donna Mike Show. Thanks so much. Let's look on the big screen now. I'll see montage. you Tuesday. Let's look at the montage of some of your highlights. That slow motion one where I was just shaking my head back and forth and the saliva was coming out of both sides of my mouth. Look at this. There's you saying F you. There's me saying F you. Right. Look at, oh, and there's, oh, look at, there's Buzz crying. Beautiful. Very emotional. Beautiful. Yeah. The Sacramento dance party is great. What did I say eloquently that you like? That's what I thought. About, about the, the work that you do. About him carrying the load, I believe it was. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't even you know, remember. Don't ever, ever. Don't even remember. That I do not, you know, that, that, don't ever think that I don't appreciate that. That I don't realize what's done. I don't think what I, I mean, I know, I know seriously how many phone calls you have over the weekend, how many, you know, what time you get up to, to do that. I know, and it's not because you, you know, you, you, I know you love it. I mean, you live it, you breathe it, you eat it, you do, do enjoy it. Do. But it's also a job. You have a job to do, and it's a sense of responsibility. And I don't take that for granted. I'll never take that for granted. And I don't take for granted at all, even when I bust your balls about being here at three o'clock. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would have it. No other way. Right. I mean, um, to, to wind this all up. Okay. Um, probably, and I'm not going to say anything bad about you. All right. But, uh, not, uh, actually, quite the contrary. Um, a guy who was uh, admittedly a big influence on my life was that guy, uh, Steve Dahl, in my radio life right. in, in right. Chicago. Way back 25 years ago when I worked there. Um, he had had a guy he worked with, and they had some stuff going on. They were like, they were Howard before Howard was Howard. Right. And, uh, that's where I got like calling your wife on the air from, from Doll and everything about just whatever it is, throw it on the air. Just, right. just go with it. Fly, just fly by the seat of your pants and, right. and let it go. Well, this guy had chemistry, not like you and I have, but good chemistry with right. this other guy, Gary Meyer. Mm -hmm. And like all DJ teams, I got uh, 10, 12 years ago. Yeah. They busted up. Yeah. I remember that. I remember yeah. listening to those guys. Gary Meyer went off to WLS, like to do boring talk radio, and right. Dahl kind of faded into, you know, like the land of the one shares. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I got, I got a call from a friend of mine over the weekend and said, you are not going to believe this, that, uh, you know, it was like front page news that they're back together. Hey. Oh, really? They, well, at least for one day. Wow. That they... They showed up and they did a show together, mainly, I think, because the one guy needs a job. Right. You know, the other guy, the... the Gary Meyer? Yeah, for lack of a better... The Mike right. of that show right. needed, a, needed a gig, mm -hmm. so he, he came back, and, and now they're looking at that like uh, that could be the second coming, and really, when I heard that news, right. mm -hmm. I thought, well, you know, look at that. Mike and I made it through 20 years. Mm -hmm. Was that recently you heard that, or that would be this morning? This morning, and then I come wow. in and say you want it me was, to leave. I'm it was right. it was in yesterday. I didn't really threaten to leave, did I? It was in yesterday. Sometimes. Oh, really? Yeah, on the front page. You know, I wouldn't walk out on you. I would never do that. You, you said you would. I, of course, I said I said a lot of things, <laughs> and I say it a lot. No, I wouldn't. I have. I you know, it's a, look at the very basic part of it. You know, I have alimony payments to make. That's it. No, I'm kidding. I wouldn't. I no, wouldn't. I don't. Hey, listen. That's Jesus you, Christ. I mean, I, you know, you're not going to let somebody down after they don't let you down. That's, just, that's not the way you play it. Right. That's not the way it goes. And you, I'm going to say one last thing. What? Oh, my God. I almost got emotional. Yeah, you, know, you didn't let us down. You hung in there. And I'm proud of you. Oh, that's well, it. Nice. All right. And you guys did from all of us. You so guys did. I mean, that's 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 the. So thing. you know, we could have certainly been like Steve and Gary. Mm -hmm. you know? I'm glad you weren't. Or any of the the great radio duos of our time. Charlie and Harrigan. They all bust up after a while. Elliot Charlie Woodside. Brown and Irv Harrigan, if we're mentioning the specific names. But you'll never truly be like Steve and Gary because you don't lay down when you do your show. <laughs> That's what Steve Dahl does, right? Yes, he does. He actually reclines. Well, I'm mm -hmm. close to it. 
No, but you're upright. Look at you. I you're know, fine. I'm upright. You're fine. No, he would actually lay down on the couch. <laughs> I mean, so you could not, I mean, you could tell. You know how you can tell when someone's laying down, the sound of laying down, right. as opposed to when you're standing up or right. even sitting back in a chair? Well, you might say that you uh, he was an influence on you, but uh, he was sure obsessed with you that day that we were doing oh. the show in the same room. In LA. When he was behind the cubicle, and yeah. all of a sudden I see his fat little head just leaning out about every five seconds. He's going, hey, what are you guys doing? Uh -huh. Hey, 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 what are you guys yeah. doing? Uh -huh. But he's a funny guy. I've listened to his yeah. show a lot. He's yeah. a funny guy. He looked like a pile of dough with glasses. Just <laughs> someone peering it around a corner. That's him. And actually, when I read that thing that the guy had sent me uh, from the uh, Sun-Times, I said, oh, boy, you know, what if you and I had busted up? Thirteen years ago, we got back together. You know where it'd be? Mm. It'd be in your shopper's newspaper. <laughs> Safeway. There'd be no way that the newspaper here would give a rat's ass if, if we had been together like for ten years and then then broke it up and gotten yeah. back together. Yeah. I got publicity uh, in the Baltimore Sun. I don't even know when it came out or if it's out yet. And all I was talking about was the Farrah Fawcett post. I think it comes out tomorrow. Jesus. And yeah. I, and I, I really, I got, I got done with that. And I go, that's that's what we, you know. Yeah! Yeah! Super duper. That is the type, Mike, of spontaneous promotion right. that will propel us yes. to our goal market. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to say it. Yes. Cincinnati! <laughs> yeah! I'll believe it when I see it. Shoot for the moon. Don't count your chickens. Market number <laughs> 32. <laughs> that is the market. We're very close to invading. That's the thing. It's very close. We're very this is not close. a confirmation. This is We're very, very close. Very close, Mike. They told us it could happen. We're back to like the old days with syndication. Yep. Three, you know, two. They're back to actually maybe. Did, did you get the email? Yeah. Did you get the email with that? Got the email. That from, little ad. From that, Chicken Man. With that ad that yeah. they're going to be running in the trade magazines. Wow. With, uh, Genius. You know, those, those marketing campaigns, you know. Mail delivery. M A L E. Brilliant. I, know they, I get it now. They put brilliant. A of, put a, put a bunch of our ratings there. Very clever. Okay, so like a postal mail. So like, how are you anyway? How are you? <laughs> how are you anyway? <laughs> Hello there, Don and Mike show. Uh, guys, does this mean that we won't have two Christmases? Oh, stop it! There's only going to be one Christmas. They're staying together. Only one, one, Christmas. one Christmas. And of course, as always. Hanukkah as well. Yes, we celebrate them all. And, and well, no. and Kwanzaa. We're going to do Kwanzaa this year. Right? Yes, we are. Hi, this is Robert DeMille. And Ramadan. Not when I'm here. Hello, Don and Mike show. I just wanted you to stop fighting. <laughs> <laughs> you speak for us all, sir. I, just, I, I can't take it anymore. I'm really, we were, we were not fighting. We were we having just, a discussion. We just had a discussion. <laughs> Don't worry, we're fine. Hello, yeah. Don and Mike show. Hola, muchachos. Hola. Hey, uh, this is um, Manny Ramirez, and I uh, just want to say to you that Bobby and me, we are a big fan of you, and we don't want you to fight no more. Oh, we are hey, very you. sorry for what Mel, makes Mel you Mel gives an eight stay up to the one o'clock in the mornings. Thank you, Manny. And um, uh, we are big ass hat. Thank you, man. We are sorry very much. Uh, we'll just push us guys. You are very fun. You are a favorite. Hey, you guys effed up the beginning of our show today. Bought <laughs> the Red Sox. We're sorry for you. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Manny. You're Hello. welcome. Hello there. Don and Mike show. Hey, how you guys doing? Hey, doing very well. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, how do you like those cow, not the cowboys, the Niners and that uh, Raider game, Don? Bye. Okay, bye bye. We'll keep that for sports radio. All right. Yeah. Now, uh, hold on. What is this, Joe? Has this one checked? Why is that? Hello, you're on the air, Don and Mike show. Hey guys, I'm so happy to hear that the Golden Boy has persevered again. That's. I have no idea what that, but I know. I, but I certainly no, understand why it was checked. <laughs> uh, my God, I know. I'm not. No, no, no. I know. I'm, uh, you know. I, I, I am. Hey, Joe. Yeah. Why? Why? Why did you check that one? I don't know. It, it seemed like the guy was on the mark. The Golden Boy has persevered and made it through again. Well, well, I don't understand. Explain it. How's Mike persevered? You won your argument with Don. No, I, I don't believe so. I think we uh, sort of came to a mutual kind understanding. Of a, kind of a draw. Strong. Well, that's a win. <laughs> Everyone, everybody wins. <laughs> well, you know, Mike. I suppose you're right. Yeah. If you're not first, you're you're last. Right. To exactly. quote Ricky Bobby. Yeah. It's interesting. I think Joe someday I'll really get inside of Joe's brain and don't figure no, it out. Oh, no. no. You'll be like playing, playing with tar. 
You know, there's some Paul, there's some small part of me that knows Joe deep in my heart that call was meant to sabotage me. So that's okay though. That's okay because you're honest about it. That's why you checked it. Hey, this will piss Don off at him all over again. <laughs> Arden, I'll really screw up his day. Ardinger's on a plane. <laughs> you just get on a plane, Joe, 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 Joe. Like that movie, Joe, I Joe, Robot. It's nothing but Joes. One of the reasons why ever I talk to Joe, I always lean up against the wall. I Joe Bot. All right, so listen. Besides the weekend stuff, yes. which we should get to eventually. To set up the next segment. Uh -huh. Before the show every day, before uh, I, I chat with Mike and chat with Buzz, uh, because we have a monkey for a producer. Kong, the eighth wonder of the world! I feel the need now to check all of the equipment myself every day. Yeah, you come in here and you check all your uh, so I, like, replays. I make sure the levels are okay. I play uh, jingles. I play like 8,000 jingles at once like this. Like... <laughs> I do stuff like that drives the drives the, boy. drives the the boys nuts. I don't even know what that is. What is it? Darlene Love. Darlene Love. But he's a fine, <laughs> fine boy. So anyway, I'll I'll screw around with that stuff, right? And I'll shut the f up. Make sure Doctor Phil's there. Make sure that I'm Federal Agent Jack Bauer. Jack Bauer is there. I'll make sure that the old program director is there. Gillespie. My name yeah. is Greg Gillespie. Right. Okay. So, so we're all set. So, what I do then, because you don't have to tell anybody they're on the air, right. and I can, I'm doing like a show for Mike and everybody in the office. Yeah, you can actually air. make the phone call to an unsuspecting person, say at your former location of the radio station, and you don't have to tell them. Now, fine. one day last week I called some phone whores. And that was good, too, because you could just dive right in, and it's not censored, and they can say whatever they want to say. And when they wouldn't respond to the tapes, I could actually get on the phone and act like a real person, mm -hmm. call her a bad word, and say that my friends were retarded. Well, today I decided we would call the radio station WJFK. Front desk. Our radio station. The front desk. Right. When we come back, we are going to have to devote... How long is, how long is a uh, Yanni? Here we go. Hey Yanni? Yes. Edited, because they put us on hold and we had to call back a couple of times and the girls were a little nasty. How long did, uh, uh, a period of tape do we have of, of the girls on the phone? Um, it was about ten minutes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ten minutes of them not knowing where these tapes were coming from. They really didn't or, know. Now, now, now you've got to understand this, that we had called and I've been playing the tapes for them, for everybody through the building, right. for 10 minutes. Right. For 10 minutes before what you're going to hear. Mm -hmm. Like halfway through this, I said to Rob, go have John run tape on this. It started uh, with the receptionist, then the, some other people joined the party, and we, some other people get on the line. We're not sure exactly who it is, but the thing I liked about this is not only is it funny, but I found it also just a tiny bit erotic. Oh, yeah. I think we all did. Not a, not a small bit. No, now, not, yeah. it, you, you might also wonder, as Mike did, as a lot of people will, it, it, when Mike came down to the studio, and this is how close we were to going on the air, it's like right. five till three, this is still going on. Mm -hmm. Mike said, they have to know that it's us. Right. Because at one point, they're like, who is this? Mm -hmm. And you'll hear this on the tape, they're like, who is this? The Don and Mike Show. And they say, <laughs> no, you've got tapes like Don and Mike. Yeah, you're just a fan of the Don and Mike Show. Yeah, right. And they had no, I, I'm, I'm amazed. No they, idea. They really, the whole time. That, that we were that you were doing this, they did not know what was going on. No idea. It's like the best phone whore segment of all time. Pretty and, good. And it's with these women at work. Now, they're not getting paid to be on the show. Have, have we identified uh, who, who the women didn't question were? It's got to it's got to be Colette, the receptionist. Right? Colette is one of them. Julie Fullman is one. Shondell is one. And oh. there might be a fourth boy. Hello. Maybe Megan. No, I don't think it was Megan. Okay. But Shondell's involved. Yeah. Who oh, who said anal? Yeah, did we find out that one? I that was the big moment. That was the big moment. And how big is your... Who yeah. said anal? I, I have an idea, but uh, I was told not to say her name anymore. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but they're cool, huh? Lisa. What? <laughs> what? what? what did he say? Oh. I think he's telling, what did he just he was telling someone else the name. Oh, who it was? Oh. 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 Yeah. Some BFD. <laughs> <laughs> 
Big B, Big F, Big D. <laughs> Neon lights. <laughs> wow. Gotta wear sunglasses. <laughs> That's such a <laughs> BFD. <laughs> See that tumbleweed blowing through? They're blowing around. There you go. All right, let me see if I've, if I've got this thing. Jesus. So we've cleared it with the most upper crust of management. Very good. We have it is clear, John. We have uh, Johnny. Sure. Darn it. We've cleared this with the. Uh... There's no need to clear it. They're station employees. It's the same thing as dialing them live on the air. Oh really? Yeah. Well, okay. you don't have to get. We didn't have to. You mean we didn't even have to ask them their permission to save them and put them on the air? We can, but I mean it's just like doing it live on the radio. They're station employees. All right, hold on, let me see. Where are we? Cut number one. Oh, see, they have us on a speakerphone. Right. You can hear it started out, I think the way it started out was just Colette, the receptionist. Right. And then, because of the content of the other end of the line, there starts to, uh, a crowd starts to draw a little bit. Hello? You. You're an embarrassment to Mike, the TV icon boy. If you're this slow. I'm Federal Agent Jack Bauer. Ah, Jack Bauer. Where is the other guy? He's Mike's boss. Shut up! You shut up. All right, hold on a second. We, <laughs> we got a break because it's about. 12 minutes long. Excellent. And what it is, is it's these four women that have worked themselves into a lather over somebody that they believe is obviously not us. They take a fan. Playing our wacky tapes over the phone. You are not. That's not who you are. Joe. So you're wondering, you're wondering how your tax dollars are being spent mm -hmm. at radio station WJFK. Oh, man. And you know, for all kids that are at that uh, primary prank age, oh, yeah. they should all get those machines yeah. in their bedroom. Top drawer equipment. Imagine the fun they could have. Red Sox time. <laughs> do, you, do you have a score, Buzz? I do. Yep. Yeah. It doesn't matter anymore. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Would you like to know it? Yeah, I would. Uh, top of the eighth, uh, Yankees two, Boston zero. Yeah. Okay. Five and a half, six and a half, six and a half games. Right? Yeah, I think something like that. Yes. Six and a half games. <laughs> six and a half games. Yes. In one eight. weekend. From Thanks. one and a half games to six and a half games. That's all right. I'll find out. Yeah. Uh, I'll find <laughs> other things to watch. <laughs> Lots of good movies on this time of year. Funny. Funny and good movies. I'm not right that up again. I'm not. I'm not. It's a silly diversion. It's a silly little game. Go see silly Snakes on game. a Plane. I, I could go see Snakes on a Plane. Snakes on a Plane did well this weekend, right? I mean, it didn't do it well, but it's... Is it, it number one or... It, just barely, yes. Just, yeah, just barely. It didn't make a lot of money. No. You have to count the Thursday night receipts, though, to make it beat Ricky Bobby. So they call that a disappointment. It right. sounds like, like 15 million or something like Instead that. Instead of 25, they were expecting. Very, very right. disappointing. Well, hey, Ricky Bobby. He's a tough one to be. Yeah, Bobby. Ricky Bobby. That's another way you could spend two NASCAR. hours. NASCAR. That's another way you could just go to the movie. Uh, so I'll go to the movie. I'll go, go to the movie. Two, I'll go to two movies, movie. watch NASCAR. Four. That's what I'll do. You know what this is? This is what I call an early fall. <laughs> <laughs> For whom? In more ways than one. It's exactly what All it right, is. All right, well, we will uh, hit a break and uh, come right back. And uh, and do the show. And I'm not going anywhere. What do you mean? I'm not going what, anywhere. What, during the break? I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, I'm going no, to please. smoke. Okay, all right. Go inside me, too. Started that again, too. <laughs> you know, we're the vengeance. You know, really? Ever since I started smoking cigarettes, man, those little Xanax aren't even necessary. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about you. Yeah, I will. <laughs> I am a important program director. <laughs> you got to hand it to those people that make those things. There's their chemicals in it that stabilize. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Okay, we got to break. We'll be right Number back. four, Arbitron rated. The Don and Mike Trailer. Man, I had a weekend. Yeah. We went to uh, Tijuana, Mexico, mm -hmm. you know, and we, we, we thought it'd be fun, you know, to go to the show. Everyone's got to check out one of these shows. And, you know, it's it's a woman and a horse. We get there, and, you know, we think it's going to be awesome, and it is not as cool as it sounds like it would be, man. It is, it's, it's, it's kind of gross. Yeah. You think a woman and a horse, and you get there, and it's, it's a woman and a horse. Yeah. And you know what? To be honest, I felt bad for her. We all just felt bad for her. Yeah. Kind of felt bad for the horse. Wow. That's something. The Don and Mike Show. That is something.
Isn't that something? How about that? How about that? We got them. They have horses ass. They understand the arts of the bunts. John and Mike. If Blanis Morissette was here, she'd be walking down the streets of New York. I know it's a different video. But she'd say, isn't it ironic, don't you think? You think? You think she'd be doing that? I think so. So, boy, oh boy, approximately one hour ago, your lovable hosts were engaged in verbal sparring. Mm -hmm. You know, Fraser Ali stuff. Right. Because... Mike had his Red Sox thing. I had my tape. I thought we should go right with it. Well, as it turns out, one of the ladies involved at the radio station... I cannot take any credit for this. That was not simply a diversion, a, a delaying tactic. It wasn't. It, 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 it kind of worked out that way. Yeah. But, uh, that's why you are... Listen, Golden Boy. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean it. No. No, I don't worked think out so. We, what, it did work out, though. One of the uh, women... It did work out. Absolutely does not want to be on the radio talking we, talking about anal we we certainly assume that you know there's no i think the uh, editorial decision has been made to yeah. uh, not pursue it any further i think that's probably uh well who knows you know i i ain't calling no yeah anyway no and i know not, and i know you ain't calling not everybody is uh is giving permission right to have their voice put on the air for there something that was pre-recorded we oh, were okay. asking a lot of questions and you know and it just got to the point where but one no, of them you know what it was yeah, one I, of them kept bringing up anal though mm -hmm. over and over again yeah and it just wouldn't be right you think you know a person you think you do yeah so as it turns out um we might have been in hot water anyway. Yeah. If, if we had just gone right on and, and played the tape, we might have been in hot water. I would say there's an outside chance. Yeah. A significant outside chance. We might have been. We might have been. We uh, might not. It's a strange world in which we live. Sure is. You never know. Sure is, Master Jack. But you know what? It was goddamn funny. It was funny upstairs. It was great. It was funny listening on our little speakers that we have inside our building. Here. You should have heard it. And you know, um, don't let that, you know, prevent another type of salvo mm. because i really think oh, that, no, that can be done happen. And, yeah and you can do it I with believe somebody I'm, else and just make a phone call afterwards i believe right? what i'm going to do is uh, one of these days i call a doctor's office you know what i equate it to cops yeah even though the guy said cops they you know because they're getting arrested they they I can think, show them um, you know it's crazy i'm going to fire whoever's phone that is ringing very good <laughs> <laughs> who has the batman ringer interesting i can never remember mm. who'd, who'd be on the line uh -huh. it would be my daughter Ah. Probably with a medical update. Oh, okay. Holy All crap. Right. Very good. Hello? Oh, missed call. Oh. That's it. I'm out of here. I'll see you tomorrow. All right. See you Bye. later. That's it. Thanks so much. I'm out. I can't say I blame you. <laughs> 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 so, uh, anyway. And, and strangely, I feel no responsibility whatsoever. I I'll really do about this, the, this person about does not. The, the frustration uh, of this. Because we both share that frustration right now. We were all kind of taken aback. Yep. We were getting ready and uh, to sit back, you know, after that certainly stressful segment and mm -hmm. enjoy something that had already been done. That Delightful. we were laughing hysterically. Hey, yeah. And go. then, you know, you never know. You just never know. Right? No, you don't. People are funny. Mm -hmm. People are very funny. <laughs> Chicks are funny. They are. I sure like that idea about the doctor's office. I know the one you can call, too. Uh, as I was going to say before, before some ass's phone rang, uh -huh. uh, you can call anybody and record them right. and do anything you want. All you got to do then is say... Do I have your permission now to play this call on the radio? In uh, in the purest sense of the word, it's actually the best way to do it, mm -hmm. and and that's the way they do it on a lot of uh, television shows. Oh, you know, where they say, you know, they say, hey, can you, you know, this, you just made a complete and total ass of yourself. Can we put that on? And they go, uh -huh, it's TV. Yeah, right. It's TV. Put it on for TV. <laughs> so sorry after all of that build up and after Mike had that uh, drama scene with, with with me, and I'm equally guilty. Mike and I bring, being drama queens, uh, we. Don't don't have the tape now yeah and then and I, but i said you feel bad about that because it was Thank but you me. know what you are we'll you, keep it for the box set you did it yeah. friday and uh, you know you did it friday and we didn't put that on because right. we couldn't and you did it today and we couldn't put that on because we couldn't and i think that the next one you do mm -hmm. you know it's gonna stick it's it's just gonna be a phone call i hope so you gotta get the right kind of business you gotta get the right kind of business right, right. Oh, the kind of business where they, you know, falling where hilarity yeah. would ensue. This, this is the first. What happened? Is this something breaking? Yeah. What, what broke? You got a new car? And you, you know, no, you no, there. The, the bugs out of it. There you go. Hey, can I say something? I, 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 I in no way want to advocate the uh, use of, of tobacco products. 
like I did before. None of us do. You know, that's right. That's my personal choice, Thank and you. I'm not. I'm not proud. I'm not proud of it. It's just working for me right now. I understand. <laughs> hey, it is. I understand. <laughs> you know. I, Tell uh, me about you. <laughs> oh, I think we've done plenty of that, haven't we, Greg? Did you stop that? We've really I done am an important stop program it. director. No, you're not. Stop it. Bank not, not anymore. Bank number. What's that? I am an important ah. program director. It was a slice of heaven while you were here, too, Greg. Nice visit. Don't mind telling you. There you go. You there, are in denial. Tell me, we all are. <laughs> or be it for me to kick a dog when he's fired. Down. Okay, so, uh, Mike, excuse me. Yes. Um, downsized. Downsized. Yes. Downsized. Right, right, right. Slip of the tongue. Budget cut. Let go. <laughs> Slip of the tongue. Laid on. Laid, uh, thank you, Buzz. Laid on. Soldier at arms. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, you know, he, everything works out for the best. For those Hopefully. who serve. Right. So the weekend, the, your weekend, yes. How was your weekend, Frank? I think I've covered it. I think I've covered it more than I uh, ever intended. Well, uh, there, there must be more than just the Red Sox, though. Uh, no, no, I'm that shallow. That's I, uh, all? <laughs> well, I told you about that other thing, but that really wasn't the weekend. That was uh, last week. Oh. And then, uh, you know, going into it, it was just, uh, you know, it was just pounding and pounding and pounding. And uh, in more ways than one, the Yankees were pounding on the Red Sox. I was pounding alcohol. No, I really wasn't. I wasn't doing that at all. And uh, in between, just a trip to the county fair. Other than that, no, I got nothing. Oh, that I got, huh? that they got the fair. Nice. Yeah. Um, other than that, I'm out. <laughs> so you didn't have a good time at the fair? It was hot. Mm -hmm. It was hot, and, and my kids yeah. my kids had a fabulous time. Well, and that's the important. That's all I care. I mean, I'm not somebody who would choose that activity if I I if I was. Uh, but enough about me. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> e enough about me. No, I mean get it out. Uh, I mean as long as we, you know, as long as we're out on the topic, get it out. That's a good point, Rob. There's a reason it's called fair, because it's just fair. Okay. No, it was actually, uh, it was actually not a bad one. You know, the people were kind of respectful, except for the lady that tried to rip me off on the ride tickets. It was, oh, it was well, fine. Normal. Well, no, they say two books of twenty, twenty dollars for uh, like a book of so many tickets that uh -huh. you can get, and then they say wristbands in tiny little letters ride all day for $12. Uh -huh. And so I bought the, the ticket book uh, and I'd spent $40. I was going to give $20 worth to one kid and 20 to, to the, the other, other kid. Mm -hmm. And Carla said to me, uh, look at that sign down there. You could give them both $12 armband and then they can ride everything. And I went back up to the lady. I said, is this true? And she didn't want to tell me. No. She really, oh. she was so pure, toothless carny. You said, this is this true. This is an abomination. <laughs> you harlot. You simple toothless. But she was. She was pure. And I realized at the moment she hadn't opened her mouth when she was selling me the original tickets. And she opened her mouth when she was addressing the subject about the $12 wristband. And I realized that she was pure carny. And at that point, it all came back to me. Carnies can't be trusted. And uh, right. after that, I to that. But I did. That should be your tattoo. And it's the last thing I'll say on it. I did dump the clown in the oh, water because of the practice we've had out here with ah. Robert the Mailman. Oh. And that's, that wasn't softballs. These were tiny little baseballs from a much greater distance. And he was made. He went, I said, no fat jokes. And he said, okay, fatso, no fat jokes. Is that your daughter with you? And he points to Carla, and I and I and I said, "Okay, he's going down that line yeah, too." Yeah. And it was six baseballs that I got for, uh, I believe, one hundred and fifty dollars, <laughs> and uh, yeah. was able. And the clown seriously came out of the dunk tank, looking like he was completely unprepared to go in the dunk tank. <laughs> and I felt incredibly Good. triumphant. I really did because yeah. I don't think you get. It was a tiny target, much different than what we had here. That Professional nice. carnies. That's that's all it was. Yeah. Good for you. But I could go on and on, but I I don't I no, I can't. <laughs> sure you can. Uh -huh. No, I'm embarrassed again because it gets back to why my weekend was my weekend specifically was so bad. Why? And it was it was all you know, it, it was uh, watching a stupid game on television uh, that uh, oh, back to that again. Well, I see it'll go back, back to that. Other that other than that it was just fine. It was just fine. It was, fine. It was certainly not one of the you know, I, it's not like I had a horrible time. I had my kids. I was I was okay with nice, that. Nice fun. I was okay with that. <laughs> nice. I was okay with that. And, uh, you know, it was fine. <laughs> it really was fine. You were okay with having your kids around. Good for you. No, I... Good, good, good for you. <laughs> good. I didn't say that the right way. Good, good for you. Good, good for you. No, that's the, uh, the, the same old, same old, uh, you know, uh, Catherine's got the lead in a play. And so I'm very hey. excited for her. I ran lines with her like I used to when I was doing that in college. And it was very exciting. It's she, hair, isn't it? She's, oh. <laughs> it's, uh, it's Godspell. She's, uh, oh, she's, she's in Godspell. Anything where they can you know, it's Old Calcutta. 
<laughs> oh, so now they now I've, I've, I've right. tapped the memory banks for all of those <laughs> old Calcutta. That's right. was a fantastic job. This is the vagina monologues. That's, uh, that's, oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, they're just wow. coming to me as we uh, as we as we go here. We didn't expect. That. See, they're thinking was, about ten different things at once here. There was really a time was. you would have been mad if I would have said that. I know, I know. Look it's how true. you have grown. I have grown. I've grown into the position. Huh? I've grown into the position. <laughs> I'm very pleased. It's just uh, certain stuff isn't as tense as it used to be. You know, that's good. I, I can say that, and it's and it's fine. It's just fine. Your divorce of vaginas. Right, well, I, I said now. Now I said, I said the vagina monologues. That's what You're I was, I was, making. I was, I was talking was about a play. Simply, I was just I was you, talking you, about a play. Non just trying to do a, a poor segue. Right, of course. <laughs> <laughs> a bad joke. <laughs> <laughs> Broadcast news. <laughs> just a bad joke. Bad joke. <laughs> Let me offer this. <laughs> oh, I'm happy with him. <laughs> Good yeah. for you. Oh, you. Is that part of the reason that you were mad last week too? Your ass and this all goes back to Mike's, you know, Mike's first job, right? Which is uh, Hank's look around cafe, right yeah. in the cafe. Our good mutual friend. So you're mad at the uh, at Doug the Shyster? Yeah, the lawyer. Yeah, mm -hmm. B big time. Wow. Haven't had any contact though since uh, things went south. So mm. gonna have to talk to him at some point. Haven't really mustered up the uh, energy to do so yet. But I think, you know what, I think it'll be just the same word that I've said during this entire segment. It'll be fine. 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 Fine as wine. Okay, anything, anything else? No. I mean, I, of <laughs> course there could be, but really nothing that I feel would be entertaining or interesting. Anything you feel you need to get out? Uh, no. No. Other than, uh, other than I'm doing really well on those little, uh, those pills, I don't take them anymore. Hey. So I'm pretty happy. Now, now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking maybe I should start taking them again. No. Maybe so. No, if I got through that last segment without that, I, uh, I, I, I don't think I would have been able to do that and, and not have a moment. I mean, I, I, right after I had my little Hispanic attack, uh -huh. I, I couldn't even talk to people about what they had for dinner for a while. Yeah. It was weird. But now it's, now it's better. Weird, wild, pharmaceutical. Wild. Wild. Pharmaceutical wild. You know what it is is when you bring your self-medication stuff back into your life, you you just stabilize yourself again. That's right. You know, it's when you try to cut everything out—bad food, booze, cigarettes, all that. Too much. You gotta cut down that. on that. It's it's useless. Too much. Well, all things in moderation, Mike, including moderation. Of course, I love that line. Mm -hmm. One of my well, favorites. Live your life. Mm -hmm. Make that your mod motto. Make that your motto. All things in moderation, including moderation. I think it's true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I'm just. What are you doing? To me? I am just making sure. Yeah, absolutely. That this is that the that the the coffee pot is empty. It is. There is not a drop left in the coffee pot. The thing I would talk about would be going back to the old crap that we started talking about, and I'm not doing that anymore. Well, here's what I want to just make sure. So you're so you're a happy camper because once you get to the point where it's all done. Where you're resigned to the fact that uh, you know you're not going to have that anymore, I'd say, and that whole thing you get excited about, you're done and you move on, and that's where I am now. Because really, I don't, I, I have no concern for it anymore. Well, you're lying. Am I lying? Yes, you're lying. I'm. I'm I mean, oh. you what, know, it's the, what so they, hard what to explain? What's so hard to explain? You like a baseball team. Yeah, but five games out of first place. I know this. Look, Carla says this to me. My mom used to say this to me. Also, even my dad, God rest his soul, said the same thing. For some reason, and I know I'm not alone in this, I put too much emotion into it. Yeah. It's stupid. I know it's stupid. It's like being addicted to something and you just can't get rid of it mm -hmm. and you put too much on it. And it's done nothing but outside of that one year where they gave me great joy. It's given me a lot of crap, you know? <laughs> yes, Rob, a little more coffee in the pot, I suppose. <laughs> but I'm done. You know me. If you keep looking at me, I'll keep babbling well, on here. Just after but the that's opening, what I feel like I'm doing. I'm the babbling on. No, no, no. After the opening today, I just want to make sure that, you know, you get it all out. Is there a final score buzz? Uh, yeah, yeah, there is. What is it? Two to one. Yankees. Yankees. All right. Um, the thing is, you know, that's it. The, the coffee pot would be uh, would be empty, you know? I think that's good it. To the last drop. Very good to the last drop. Thank you, Buzz. And I'm probably a little awkward with the guys out in Cancer Corner. I think everybody was kind of giving me a few, you know, feet to not, you know, it wasn't as... as well, like no one was talking to you well, during I the felt, last no, break. No, they were, and I think it was me feeling awkward because I felt like I've upset everybody today. No, no, and no, I, I was just out there, you know, doing what I do, you know, just standing out there. And normally, well, don't, don't you feel better that I, that I let you watch me really re-rob out? I, you know, I don't, I, that, 
I did that. You know, I mean, is I that for my that please God I, don't tell me that was no, for me. I would have reamed him out like that in private. Yeah. I just didn't. No, even, I did it in front of you to try to make you feel better when you came back in the studio. You were you were being nice to me, and I appreciate that. And I, but I think I got the distinct impression, as we always do, we have a post mortem. We had worked our crap out. You know, you know how I feel about yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, I know yeah, how yeah. you feel about me. Yeah. It, in fact, we're better at that than we used to be. We'd go for a while not really knowing what's going on, and you know, I just I think we were all bummed out for the same reason that we can't play that tape. That sucks. We were very disappointed about, very excited about the. Thing. It was, it was funny as s. It was. I mean, it really, in some strange way. Kong, the eighth wonder of the world. Ends <laughs> up being his fault. <laughs> it always does. It does. I mean, I guess it's, I'm not. I'm not going out of my way to pick no. on you. I'm not going out of my way. No. It. Yeah. Well, you know, it's like Jesus Christ. Here's what happened during the break. So Mike goes outside. I say to Rob, you know, Rob says, uh, you know, one of the women doesn't want to be. I said, well, just call the lawyers. Just give me an answer. Get me an answer. Four minutes, five minutes, six minutes. Comes back. Offers me up some lame excuse. Said, what did the lawyers say? Um, they're not there. <laughs> what? <laughs> Good. Thank you. Oh, thank God. you very much, Rob. Wow. Thank you very much. If it, if, it, if it's gonna go bad, just freaking tell me. Okay. If it's gonna go bad, just tell me. You know, like if there's a problem running a segment that you know about or you think or, or don't be afraid. Just gonna be, I mean, trust me, it'll be worse. It, it, it's much worse not to tell me. Yeah. And then, like, have me yell at you in real life and now in, totally embarrass you again on the radio. Are you liking this at all, Mike? I, you know, I don't want to insult Rob, but I don't care. <laughs> and see, that speaks, no, that speaks to my, that speaks to my position, which we were discussing before. You're doing your job. And now we've got to pull back the curtain a little more. My position of lack of involvement, I'm not, I don't have that kind of control in your life, right? I don't, I mean, I don't care in that I know it will blow over and I know it'll be fine and I know that he's right. Maybe not this time, Mike. No, I, I agree with him, but I'm not going <laughs> to pile on because it's not. But at the same time, the, the bigger problem with this is that, you know, we just, none of us knew, you know, what was going on there. And if we'd known that, it probably would have been a different scenario. And we would have known a lot earlier and we were all kind of like, you know, everybody reacted the same way to that. We we're like, oh, God. You know, because right. it was funny, and there was a moment, and it's just a... And that sucks, too. I care about you. I care. I No, I didn't say I didn't care about you. I said I didn't care about this particular... Doesn't matter what... Reaming. Doesn't right. matter what... Don care. was asking me if it was doing anything for me. Yeah. I, I much prefer when Don yells at Buzz. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm <laughs> kidding, of course. As no. do I. No. <laughs> it's really... I you know what? I really... I've, I've gotten to the point now where, you know, it's not... I think we all have because we've been together a long time. Right. That if somebody screws up, they screw up, and we know right. that they, you know, like uh, you know, and then we move on. Must be wet. And it happens to be <laughs> your turn. Kong, recently. the eighth wonder of the world. Right. Until the, end, until the end of the book. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's off. Winter 08. <laughs> this is a very good show right now because we are pulling back the curtain, you know. All yeah. the way, baby. It would be a better show if we had that thing to play. Sure it would. <laughs> now, I'm not... Now you, <laughs> see, you, think, you think I'm throwing him under the bus there, but I'm not because it's not... You know what? And Can I just say... It's really like, not his fault. Throwing under the bus gets a bad rap yeah because sometimes you just get tired of being a stand-up guy mm -hmm. sometimes you just get tired of it. you got to say you know what mm -hmm. hey listen okay i got total f-ups around me hey, total f-ups how you doing rob how you doing oh i'm sorry Present company excluded, of course. <laughs> well, yeah, Mike excluded, of course. <laughs> don't, get, don't get too specific. Just move on with yeah. your point. <laughs> we don't need that. Surrounded <laughs> by amateurs, rank amateurs, right? <laughs> hey, look at the success we've had, okay? Everything's going great. Yeah. Yeah. Everything's going great. Cincinnati. <laughs> See? Come on, Cincinnati. Now, don't don't count Cincinnati. They don't have it yet. <laughs> I'm not counting, Mike. I'm right. just dreaming out. I'm like, I'm like Kenny, Kenny Nolan. I like dreaming. You know, this is so much more interesting and better to listen to than the crap that's on TV right now. Oh, yeah. The same old, same old. I, mean, I disagree. Is. I think it was some type of special Montel today. 
I just, I've I've seen the always, ad. It's always <laughs> I've seen the ad. You know. He I, was, it, it might have been Dr. Sylvia Brown. <laughs> That's always a big one. She's powerful, smart. Doc Brown. <laughs> she really is. Doc uh, Brown. <laughs> everything's going to be just fine. Everything is fine. That's wonderful. I would... No, I don't want to say that. <laughs> I, I will say it. You say know. what? Say it. What? Yeah, Today's the day. I would, say I, it. I would make the... I, I, the only thing I would tell you, Rob, is I would have made that call without asking. Yeah. And and a few more things like that will take pressure points off of you and certainly pressure points off of Don. I really think that occasionally, and if you do, you know, the whole thing that... I mean, the, I know we're speaking in veiled terms, but... I have right. to. We have to. But yeah. the fact is, you know, you go ahead and you do it. You take the, that... He doesn't, you know the reasons that, that he doesn't need to so just do it. You know, you know, and that's that would be the way I that's the way I would handle that situation. That's and then how just, you roll. That's how I roll. And then just come in. You know, it's a yay or nay. Bingo. And then, don't be a nervous Nelly. You know, then come in here in your grass skirt and your big <laughs> rosy cheeks. I'm not wearing a grass. <laughs> I know you're not. All I know. I'm just imagining you, you in Gilligan's Island. Oh, All, you're not. So yeah. you don't deny the rosy cheeks, man. How can I? Oh, no, they were, goddamn, they were Rosie O'Donnell cheeks. I think when we have they our little rosy, thing, rosy we got to go back to the scene of some of our former crimes and just go to, like, 4 a.m. That's what I think. A week from, what is it, Wednesday when we're yeah, doing our thing crimes? out there? Yeah, uh, sure. Yeah. What are you talking about? I'm talking about our appearance a week from Wednesday. I'm talking about that, so, you know. And none of this, enough of this mamby pamby crap. Yeah. I'm talking about like the old days, over the top, like all day. Oh, oh, now that we're not at your joint. <laughs> yeah, I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about just length of time. No, maybe not. That's probably not a good. Oh, wait, you want to do it all night drunk? I have my panic attacks when I do that. When uh, I come back in here, so well, I can't then. do that. I can't know. do that. Maybe I could do that when I was younger. Remember your bachelor party where you and I ended up sitting on the curb on Wisconsin Avenue? That was a good day, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, that, was that was a good, good party. That was a good party. <laughs> that was good. See? Yeah, but you know what? The fact that we'd have to come in and do this, you know. The next day, no. Can't do it. Can't do it anymore. Cannot, cannot happen. Wouldn't okay, work. so that your coffee pot is empty. Totally empty. Okay. Great. Buzz? Yes? How's your pot? <laughs> that's Some a sticky. That's a sticky question. Some say it's the best. <laughs> All right, hold on. We uh, we got some more weekends that we'll be right back. Number four, Arbitron rated the Don and Mike show. Ah! Uh, it's Don and Mike on the pike next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Don and Mike and their whole wacky crew invade Hooters on Rockville Pike. Come on out for some wings and perhaps a breast. Don't miss Don and Mike's triumphant Maryland debut. You'll wish that the night would never end. And who knows, maybe it won't. The Don and Mike Reno style show. Hooters of Rockville. That's how I roll. Yeah. <laughs> right, champion carpet bombers, Don and Mike. Oh, Sounds like somebody's got a case of the moon dudes. Uh, this portion of our short list one is brought to you by Ford. Visit addictedtocali.com for all your Kelly Clarkson tour information. And all this information and bloody O's. Chance to win Kelly Clarkson's Mustang GT convertible. Brought to you by Ford. <laughs> See what you did to me? <laughs> it's like clockwork the way you're paying Do you see that? I didn't do that. That bitty motion. No, I'm not kidding you. Yeah, I did that. Yeah. You know what this is? Yeah. This is raspy from anger. From, from, from stress. Oh, well, yeah. Uh, uh, stress is a... Is stress and anger. Anger is an ugly word, Mike. I, I, you mean stress. stress is an ugly word? Or, uh, yes, anger, anger is, is an ugly, ugly, ugly word. I, I understand. <clears throat> so please, ball. bear with me. Yeah. I am sorry. Bear with me. I, I, I <laughs> don't be sorry. It was a little raspy when you came in today. Not in the least. It was perfectly I, okay. I mean, that's I'm telling you. Well. Yeah. Absolutely perfect. Really? Yep. Oh, man. But, you know, I've yelled at quite a few people today. I know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, it's a little bit you, it's a little bit Rob. <laughs> and maybe just in, uh, a little bit me. Well, you know, it happens. It happens. With, maybe a little bit me. You want a lozenge or something like that? No, I'm fine. I am absolutely little fine. honey, little lemon. Uh, the weekend. Yes. Uh, so uh, just bear with me. Let me get my voice back here. Right. And uh, I don't think there's anything you can screw up during this break, Rob. 
well, we're pretty young. Yeah. Let's well, wait and see. Well, yeah, but I don't think there is. So good. just uh, take a load off and, and have a seat and have a good time. I hope you had a good weekend. I hope you had a good weekend. I did. Good. good. I'm glad I, to hear that. I good. truly did. I, I'm glad. I'm glad you had did. a good weekend. I, yeah, um, it uh, worked out. What? I hope it worked out well for you. I, I You know, because, I mean, if we both had bad weekends, what fun would that be? Right? I thought you had a good weekend, except for the Red Sox. Yeah, exactly. And the, and the fair. Yeah, I've fine. had better, yes, exactly. Okay. 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 Mine. Well, mine was good. Good. Mine was exceptional. You didn't have any neighbors come over or anything like that? Oh, so hold on a second. Uh -oh. I'm going to call my girlfriend. All right. Because I can get just a little proof, but not about my nutty neighbors. Uh -huh. Okay. But about salesmen. Now, now listen, I live in a nice neighborhood. Door-to-door -door solicitors. Yeah, this 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 creepy guy. Hey, hi, sweetie. Oh, hello. Hello. I'm only calling you up for verification. Saturday afternoon, about five o'clock, Janet comes over. We're going to go to the football game Saturday night. We're getting ready to leave, and there's a, a a knock on the door. The guy at the door. Do you remember exactly what his spiel was? Well, he was hard to understand him because he sounded like he had rocks in his mouth. Mm. But he had something where he had won some contest and he was trying to sell something. And he said that he just moved into my neighborhood and his mom and dad said that he should walk around and introduce himself to the neighbors. And the script. Maybe so, a, so did he approach you as though he was just uh, being neighborly? Was yes. That, was that the entree into like a sales pitch? So I was standing there going, well, okay, it's nice to meet you. And he said, uh, perhaps you read about whatever high school wrestling team or whatever in the newspaper. And I said... Hey, gee, I'm sorry I didn't. He said, well, we, you know, I'm a big part of that team. And it was like, so it was a kid. Yeah, well, how old do you think he was, Janet? I would say 16, maybe 17. He's old enough to drive, but he was on foot. Uh -huh. And when I drove down, um, I saw him at the top of the neighbor's driveway, and I thought he was just, then I thought, no, he just, just didn't look like he belonged. <laughs> so <laughs> Because he didn't have a vehicle, and he was just kind of like wandering, like, he just really looked like he was up to something. We were pretty sure when we came back from the Redskins game, all my furniture would be gone. So uh, he was, uh, you, uh, you thought he was uh, posing, perhaps, well, as a uh, high school athlete? Celebrity he most looks like, Rob? Yeah. Really? Um, some hotshot athlete. A, yeah, like, like a young phenom. So he was gorgeous. Yeah, he, was, <laughs> he was dreamy. He was very Aryan. Oh, and and he reached white. into his briefcase and pulled out tapes. Big and, big and white with blonde hair. Yeah, and, um, wanted to know. Anyway, oh, I remember what he said to me. Oh, hey, anyway, thank you, Janet, for, for at least backing me up that this crap actually does happen. Oh, yeah, it does. It does. All right, sweetie. I'll see you. Okay. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. So... Bye. The guy shows up, and part of his spiel is, he introduces himself as my new neighbor. Right. I'm like, hmm, okay, nice right. to meet you. He said, are you a sports fan? And I said, well, you yeah, am going to the game tonight. Put the tickets in my breast pocket. He said, well, whatever with the wrestling team. Then Janet walked by, and I said, well, listen, uh, I'm glad that, it, that you like sports and I like sports, but I really got to be going because I'm, I'm going to the game. He said, <laughs> well... What I'm trying to do is help kids who don't have books. Mm -hmm. And I just stood there and looked at him for a second. And I said, really? And he said, yes. <laughs> May I show you something? And I said, sure. Did Here's he have any kind of satchel yeah. or... No. Reached into his back pocket and pulled out a thing that looked like it had been touched by one million people. <laughs> it looked like the oldest, rattest, rattiest dollar bill that... Uh, B. Arthur had been keeping, uh, you, you know, know in, her, in, her, uh, there. in between two cheeks. I'm interested to, to know what the uh, pitch is going to be for this thing. We didn't even get that far, right? Oh, really? Because here's what he does. He shows me this pamphlet, and I said, now no one's going to get this except people who are as old as us. <laughs> I looked at this pamphlet, and I said, what the F is this? Grit? <laughs> oh, now, no. do you remember Grit? No, yeah. what is what is Grit? Yeah. Grit was a thing that used to be, a, if you read comic books, right? Um, it was like a come on to get you to go sell crap to people, sell subscriptions and stuff, and you would get stamps that would allegedly help you uh, win a bicycle win or... Prizes. Wasn't yeah. Grit itself a magazine? Yeah, yeah it was a newspaper. newspaper. Yeah, right. a newspaper. So he's Horrible. selling a subscription to a magazine. I'm not really sure. I was not able to to discern because when I took the pamphlet from him, I said, this is like circa 1970. Yeah. I said, this is the best you got? I said, and you, you want money from me? And he said, 
Well, I'm just trying to meet the neighbors. Uh -huh. I said, right. nice meeting you. We got to go to the game. So he's he's going door to door. Did at any time you think that perhaps he was not representing what he said he was representing? Oh, I think it now. Yeah. I mean, I I thought it then. I think it now. I had a friend who, for a while, sold magazine subscriptions door to door. They gave him a speech, a script to work from. Hi, my name's Mike, Mike Skelton. Don't know if you know me or not, but I just moved in down the street. Working my way through college and yada, yada, yada. The idea is to be friendly and involve them in your story. This usually takes like a half an hour before they ever get to the point. So it's a come on uh, that, yeah, that he uses. Right. And he uses the old I'm part of the neighborhood thing. Right, he right, did. To get you to, uh, so to buy I, stuff. So then I said to him, you know, uh, time had run by. And I said, I really got to think about solicitors. I said, so, you know, your stuff looks outdated. Bye-bye. And he was about halfway down the driveway. I said... Incidentally, what's your mom and dad's name? Where do you live? And he said, off Grover Road. Now, he might as well have said, Grover six, Road. I, live in, I live in Bedford Falls. Yeah, he might as well have said, he might as well have said, yeah, 1600 Pennsylvania <laughs> Avenue. The road, that he, the road that he named is about 15 miles long <laughs> and winds through all, all type of uh, country area. So... As we as we pulled away, you know, I said to Janet, I, said, I live off Grover Road. My mother's name is Pete. My mom's uh, my my father's name is Mary. <laughs> See you later. I said, what the frick? I said, nobody gets people coming by. I had a, I had a Bible salesman come by. Yeah. I, now I got this kid out here hawking this stuff like, hey, I'm your best buddy, and right. it's from 1925. Uh -huh. know, literally, but the the pamphlets were old, and, and it's and a, it's a time that we live in now that it is it is much more. I think of an invasion yes. than it used to be. Oh, I mean, this God. is in, in the day of the internet and everything yeah. else. I mean, you don't have that in the old days. That's the way people used right. to sell door stuff. To door. So my uh, my girlfriend, she started off Saturday. Oh boy, she got me. She got me real, real good. Uh, we're going to go to the Redskins game on Saturday night. Right. The Redskins, uh, incidentally. They were on top of their game. <laughs> good, good. It really made me happy. That's it's going to be the bowl this year. Huh. They're and going to the bowl. Anyway, we're going to. I say to her, you know, it's an eight o'clock kickoff. Uh -huh. Even though it's a preseason game, right. we must leave by five thirty. Yeah. You know, two right. and a half hours for the game. She shows up about five o'clock. Okay, good. and it's your car pulling up, and I think fantastic. I hear her at the front door. I say, "Come on in." She comes in. She is wearing a Steelers jersey, her Ben Roethlisberger jersey. And she has her Steelers terrible towel. And oh, she's a big fan. She's standing there. Had she given you any warning about this? No. Well, she knew we were going to go to a football game. Right. But she kept saying to me, what should I wear? And I said, you know, oh, honey, wear whatever you want to wear. It's, 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 it's a football game. Mm -hmm. Now, so she walked in the door and I said, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> no. And she said, what? And I said, you know, listen, first off, the Steelers are not playing tonight. I said, second, <laughs> that's the first thing. I said, second, it's the Redskins and the Jets. I said, no, you don't wear your Roethlisberger jersey. And no, you definitely do not bring your terrible towel to the game. <laughs> no, you don't, your Steelers <laughs> towel. She said, well, it's all that I, all, all that I brought. Yeah. I, and I said, well, then you go upstairs and you'll find like some big oversized polo shirt that I've got or something, or you can do that thing that girls wear where they wear like their, their, their boyfriend's like dress shirt or whatever. Right. I said, <laughs> she, you know, it's interesting when you're giving her the recommendations on her wardrobe. It's quite interesting that, uh, with your incredible collection, you did not suggest that she change into perhaps another jersey that sure. you might have. You're, are you possessive of those? Did that cross your mind at any time to uh, maybe have her slip into one of uh, one of your jerseys? Far too valuable, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> Far too valuable. See, do you see what you do to me now that I am calm again? Yeah. Uh, now that there's no more yelling going right, on. Right, right, yes. Now I'm feeling, now. Oh, that's good. I'm sorry. I didn't that's mean to. Better. I, you know, I, 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 I'm sorry about I'm it. I'm so fragile. I, you, we're both fragile. Handle with care. That's, oh, uh, fragile. that's the uh, Handle nature, with care. nature of the business. Right. But I, I, I know that you didn't offer her seriously. I mean, we, we can divert like you're, but you really didn't offer her your, your jerseys. How many would you say you have in your possession? Oh, that's a dumb discussion. We can come back to that another day. <laughs> okay. So she, you told so, her to change. So I said to her, you know, no, you cannot. And she looked, she said, why is a football game? I can wear my Steelers jersey. I am a Steelers fan. And and then I said, listen, Janet, we are going to have a major problem. I said, I am a dick about things like this. And then she said, come on. She said, I've got my other clothes in the car. 
She said, do you really think I would wear this to the game? I thought for a second maybe she, when you said she pulled one over on you, she was going to remove the, the Steelers jersey to have a Redskins jersey underneath it. No, and she had her dumb, terrible tally. Oh, and she had uh, the true sign of the idiot, the flag for the car. <laughs> oh, yeah, nice. She wanted, she wanted a to put Steelers the flag. Steelers flag. So she walked in with the terrible towel uh -huh. and her jersey and, the flag. and her flag, you know, all ready to go to the game. But right. no magnetic decal? No decal. So, so she got me on that. Uh, we're in the car. We're on the we're on the way to the game, and uh, on the way there, we uh, we we listened to the coverage as as best we could. Oh, yeah. I mean, were you able to pick it up on any radio station with any kind of consistency? Well, Mike, I, I, now I, I will be. I swear on Frieda's grave. Uh, when we got five miles from the stadium, right on the one frequency that they said to listen to, like at ninety four, mm -hmm. it was like this. Five miles from the stadium. I said, okay. Let me turn to the other one. Yes. The 92, whatever one. Right. That one was... This is ball, first on the... First on the 27, first and second on the... First and second on the... So another FM frequency. Right, and it's got other stuff bleeding through. So I thought, ah... Oh. Let me go to the AM. Yes. Ah, Let me go. I mean, e even if it's a weaker signal with AM, it's less annoying than that ghost thing that you get yeah. with FM. Let me let me go to the AM. And as it turns out, I thought, well, okay, you know, this is it's crappy AM, mm -hmm. but it's okay. Now we left the game, and we got in the car, and I turned it back on, and all I heard was, <laughs> so I called a radio friend of mine, and I said, you know that station that Snyder bought. That that AM station that he bought that's right. supposed to cover the entire District of Columbia. It's mm -hmm. three, right? Three radio stations? Yes, but the way that they promote it, even at the stadium, is that the AM station is the one that everybody can listen to. Right. Even okay. the boss. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Even, even the boss. Mm -hmm. So we're in the car. I'm thinking, I cannot hear it. So yeah. I call a radio friend of mine. says, oh, didn't you know at night? They go down to 45 watts. Yeah. No, like That's a light a daytimer. Now, now, hold on a second. Sort of like a daytimer. A daytimer goes down to 500 watts at night. Right. If you have a 45-watt radio station, <laughs> really? That's like something you could have in your basement, like yeah. in the basement of the science We had that at American University, right? Right. It's called carrier current. Right. It's like a Mr. Microphone. It's carrier current. It's, it can be heard really seriously. It was designed to, it's a college frequency to be heard on the campus. So again, advertisers, you know, if you are paying big money for your ads on those Redskins radio, uh, oh boy, you might as well just open the window and throw the dollars outside. All because he couldn't find anybody to pay his price, right? He couldn't find anybody that would pay the price with like great radio signals and uh, that sucks. So she, uh, she comes to the game with me. Janet comes and we get there. She's, She's never been to the stadium before, and it's a nice enough stadium. We walk around. She's amazed at how much everything is costing, and yeah. I said, you know, ain't like that uh, that, that Phoenix Stadium. Have you seen all? The, have you seen that? Oh, the new Cardinal Stadium. Oh my God, it's beautiful, don't that, it? That seriously is the the first time I've seen a football stadium. Have you seen how yeah. they slide the grass yeah. in from underneath? They do it like with an hour before the game. Right. They slide the whole thing. It's just it's amazing. It's really going to be the the talk of the league. It's so we, we sat down, and the first thing that she said. She's uh, such a girl. You know, just like Frida. And I, and I mean that as a compliment. Mm -hmm. We sat down in our seats and she said, Oh my God. And I thought, oh, Well, you know, I know she likes football. She said, This looks just like your John Madden game. <laughs> that is a girl thing. You know, and I said, That is kind of girly. I said, Wait a minute. No, the Madden game <laughs> looks like this. Right. And she said, No, 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 no. I've never been here before, but I've seen you play it on TV. This is really like the game. Is she a legitimate Steelers fan? Is she? Is yes. she really? Okay. Yeah, but I mean, she's a girl. <laughs> so let you, let's keep that in mind. Um, does she mean it looks like it because you played at FedEx Field in the Madden game? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so that's, that's, yeah. as soon as you walk, and, and also with the seats, she right. said, Oh, your seats are just like in, like in Madden. <laughs> Where you have like the overview of the whole. Right. I, I said, wow. well, they're good seats. I How said, do you answer that? I said, well, everybody on this side <laughs> has these good seats, and yeah. the people on the other side have equally good seats. And she said, but it looks just like the video game. You know, I mean, that, we, that was like a chicken and the egg thing we kept discussing. You know, like, 
Really, there wouldn't be a video game if there wasn't a, a, a real game. It's kind of in the same ballpark with, uh, why doesn't he tuck his shirt in? You know, yeah. that, that kind of thing. Yeah. So we're watching the game, and, uh, and I'm meeting uh, uh, the people that I hadn't seen, as I'd mentioned, in a couple of years since Frida passed away. Some of the uh, people, and they're very respectful, the people in the section. Mm -hmm. And Janet, I don't know, I don't know why I, I, I'm very lucky that I picked someone who was uh, so similar to Frida and also very di different to, uh, from Frida, but that same goddamn outgoing personality that attracts me to mm -hmm. Frida and to Janet, and also it, it uh, annoys the hell out of me. Mm -hmm. At one point, I got to take a leak, and I said, do you need anything? I got to take it. She said, no, I'm fine. Good. I leave the section. I come back about mm, eight minutes later. I sit down. She says, hey, I want you to meet our neighbors. <laughs> oh. Like, I'm looking at her like, excuse me? She doing? said, well, hey, these people just bought the seeds last year. Now, they didn't see you at all here last year. You know, this is Manny, Mo, and Jack, and I want you to meet our neighbor right next door. Now, now this is Sheila. She bought the third seed, the seed that used to be barred. She got a six-year contract on that. Now, of course, you already know there's Pedro down there, and there's Mike over there. And, oh, look, there's there's Bobby over there. And everybody's very happy. I, mean, I leaned over, and I said, I said, I've been coming to the games for eight years. Right. I don't know any of these people's names. <laughs> How do you know all of their names? She you you kind of like to talk about them from afar. Yeah, I know. That's part of the pleasure. Right. Even though you're like a regular there with everybody. Same people every game, but you like to keep that little uh, distance between them. No, right? but she was just... And I, and I, and I leaned her way into me and, and pulled her close, and I said, Don't be so outgoing. And, and she said, what? what? What do you mean, don't be so outgoing? You're being way too affable. She, she, pulled, she pulled herself away. She said... What do you mean, don't be so outgoing? I said, don't introduce yourself to everybody. I don't need to know everybody's name. And she said, okay, whatever. Yeah. And she put her hat bag on, her pink Redskins hat. <laughs> and then, just to piss me off, some guy walked by. It was one of those deals, stand up and let them get to the other side of the aisle. Uh -huh. As he walked by, she said, hey, how you doing? And the guy said, I'm doing fine. She said, my name's Janet. We have season tickets. Oh, What's your name? I like. She's doing this just to piss me off. <laughs> yeah. just, Meanwhile, there's a little thing called a football game going on. It was during a break. Oh, during a break. All right. It, it was during a break. She had it timed perfectly. You have labored for eight years to keep these people away from you, and now it's all changed. Right. It's forever changed. No, I like them. They're they're, they're very nice people. It was just. Oh, good. It was, you, you have an interesting relationship. I've only been to like so two free games. so to ask that, that I left, yeah. and as soon as I come back, it's like, She's everybody's best friend. She's never been to a game before. Eight like you, 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 you look at the people. They're all very nice. You're, you're respectful to the people. You know certain ones better than others. Like are the people like with direct proximity. The people that sit directly in front of you. The and, old and maybe people. right to your right or something that you know them. But uh, you well, know, here's the thing. I thought really other other than that, you go the part of the fan experience is making fun of people that are at the game. <laughs> and also, you know, like I mean, I had I had pretty much described all of the people in the section that I knew to Janet right. and on the way home she was saying to me oh d didn't you know his name is Pete <laughs> I'm like see that guy over there see the guy wearing that, that number he is actually yeah I think he may just have gotten out of prison I did I did I did not know that and uh, she also oh the thing that she did that really Ooh, just pissed me off. She likes the commercials in the stadium. Oh, wow. She likes well, it's them. A, it's her first time. She likes them. She likes the fact that they're loud. Give her time, she'll get over that. She laughed at them. Oh, no. You know, we're sitting there in the stadium like, oh, oh God, this is everything I hate about this. Don't laugh at this. Did she show a proper amount of attention during the actual gameplay? She kept screaming, where is Randall L.? Because he, he used to play with the Steelers. Right. He's, and, I, and I did get a lot of this, a lot of, what's that guy doing? Right. I, 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 I don't know. He's, he's down on the bench. A little Q&A. How come he's sitting by himself? <laughs> I said, uh, I don't, I, can I watch the game, please? Who's that guy down there? Right. When, when you used to, did you actually get the step on the field? What do you have to do to get a drink? Really? Do they do that with the walkie-talkies? How do they? How can you get a drink and you don't even have to pay for? It? Oh, they get your credit card in advance. Oh, did you meet the people next? You know, it was. I mean, she guys. was excited. Yeah, very, much. very much so. Thrilled and excited very to be at the ball so. game. Like a hyperactive poodle, she was. And this is only the preseason. Yeah, right. Imagine when the thing really means something. She was. T she was fine by the time we got home. Of course. I put her leash on and dragged her all the way home. <laughs> 
It's like Aunt Edna. <laughs> That's right. She sat on top of the car on the way home. <laughs> no, it was good. I had a great, I had a great time. Was the, did she find it? So she found it to be a fan-friendly experience. Yeah, she liked it. All right. She had, she had a very good time. Uh, the, the only thing, other thing about the weekend that I was even going to bring up, oh, oh first, uh, man versus dog. Mm -hmm. yes. Those dogs are now going into that kennel. Oh, the, the crate, you mean? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you have to. It's not a fight anymore. It's night. perfect. It's good not a fight. Uh, there was only one accident over the weekend, and I know it's just because my one dog, Max, is, is just pissed at me because he has to sleep in the crate. Right. And mm -hmm. to that, I just say, T.S. Mm -hmm. But there you go. Have they had, and they haven't had any accidents in the crate? Oh, there was one. Was it number one or number two? It was number one. Number one. I had no, I cleaned number one out of a crate, too. Was, I really believe, I believe what they, they write about as far as dogs, that number one, you know, if they, it's really if they have to. Right. I mean, they do things like no water after 8 o'clock at night and uh, and put them in the crate after 11 o'clock at night, if you can, or as late yeah. as you possibly can. That's what they say. So well, they go, All uh, I know, the last week I was, you know, talking about pushing Clink in, you know, like mm -hmm. pushing a donkey into this thing. You didn't want to go like a bucking bronco. Well, now yeah. it's like, boom. Hey. Night time. Here we go, boys. Come on. Cram yourselves in there. So all that's, right. That's working out great. And keep the crate. What I, I know you're supposed to throw stuff in there, but I'm not a real big believer in throwing the little doggy bed in there. Do you have anything soft or anything that they, uh, like a, a little blankets? Dog, a little blanket. The blankies. Yeah. There you go. I mean, when I was hosing out the crate with, 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 you know, urine, you know, the Great Pyrenees urine, I figured that it was a bad idea to uh, put anything soft that could be absorbent in there right no, now. No, but they really don't like to go where they sleep. Do right. They? I mean, well, no, you know, there are, uh, my dogs kind of break the rule on that because Max does pee on his little doggy bed. Mm. You know, you know it's, the, the, it's if they get used to it and uh, they can still be trained on that. I still think it's the best thing. And you're not supposed to respond if they're howling. You're supposed to ignore them, and that's, sure. that's hard. It's like a, it's the same thing like a toddler, like an infant. The only other thing from the weekend was was this guy that just weirded me out on Saturday. I was out running a bunch of errands before we were going to go to the game, and I was going to the grocery store, the shock, going to the liquor store, right. and I get out of my car at the grocery store and liquor store. Then anyway, I get out of the car, and there's a guy standing there, and he's looking at my car, and you know, this is not unusual for a guy to say this to you. Uh, I get out of the car, and the guy's standing there, Staring at me, and right away I think, you know, oh, okay. Here's the adoring public. <laughs> well, here I am, ready to once again say hi to somebody. But no, right. the guy's looking at my car. He said, "How you like it?" I said, "What's not to like?" <laughs> a line out of the movie Lost in America. Right, Albert Brooks. I said, "What's not to like? It's a great car." Beep beep. I walked by him. Said, "Have a good weekend." Guy turned, started walking with me towards the store. Mm -hmm. Said. I'm thinking about getting one. I said, good, good, I love it. That was the room in the back seat. He said, show me. How long you had it? I said, uh, I've had it about a year and uh, three months. Now, at, at this point, we have walked away from my car. Right. We're, we're up over the curb, starting to go into the liquor store. He said, what kind of mileage you get? <laughs> and I swear to God, I turned around and I said, I really don't mean to be rude, but go to the dealership. And the guy said, huh. okay, Don, you know, I yeah. knew, uh, no, no, no. But the guy said, I knew you were a dick in real life. Yeah. And I said, e excuse me? He said, I, I know who you are. I, I know who you are. And now the whole reason he was doing it. And now I know how you really treat people. I said, hold on a second. Hold on, hold on a second. You know, jerk face. Yeah. You know, you came up to me and said, how's the car? I said, it's great. Didn't you like start to walk into the, the liquor store with me when you were going in the opposite direction? I said, did he, did you vibe on him a little bit that maybe he was, you know, he did spot you, he did recognize you? Yeah, but because his, when you kind of go into that. Uh, but his whole thing was that he, although he was aware, he was aware that I was a radio guy. Yeah, well, how transparent is he that? He just wanted to ask, you know, how the car was. Right. So anyway, I was I was extremely rude to him. <laughs> extremely. <laughs> Bill was satisfaction. Extremely rude. You should not treat listeners that way. <laughs> you should not. Because it, but he was it was a sneak attack, really. Yeah, yeah, it was. I mean, if it was if it wasn't a sneak attack, he would say, "Hey, I, I listen to your show. How you doing?" You know, that would be that'd be the fair thing to do. The the guy, so we're standing in front of the liquor store, and the guy he starts, "Okay, Don," and I said, "Are you busting my balls?" I said, "What?" He said. I'd like to see how you talk about this on, on the radio. And I said, I'll say it exactly like that. And, and, and much like I did earlier today, I raised right. my voice a little bit. Right. I said, Get out of my effing face! 
Right. You know, then I realize over at the Giant, yeah. I see by where they're stacking up the parts <laughs> that I've caused a bit of a, uh, scene, a, bit, of, a bit of a scene. Yes. Yes. I'm, <laughs> I'm yelling at this uh, this guy. It was before you went into the liquor store, right? Oh yeah. You saw you were standing out there with a big vodka bottle. <laughs> God, am I having fun? No, but, but that was the other part. You know, how much? How much I have looked that I, I'm walking up with this guy, having a conversation, end up really raising my voice at him, it's like, oh, just leave me alone. And it's like, over there, like, ah, my sanctuary. <laughs> it's 11 o'clock in the morning. Where's my, where's my two liter bottle of vodka? That is really the, the one thing. It's the same thing if somebody will call the show and uh, one of us has been out somewhere and they will say, hey, I saw you. You know, I've always said it's better if you, you know, if you listen and you're a listener, just say it. It's a, it's an yeah. unfair advantage, but I guess it comes with the territory. Well, we, we got to break the one last thing I'll tell you, and this will bring you joy. Okay. I'm in my garage. Cleaning out the garage. Right. There's a big, gigantic shelving unit. Mm -hmm. On the left hand, there's, it's a two-car garage to so the left-hand side. My like side. industrial shelving? Right. No, some stuff that's free to put up. Okay. Like some, uh, uh, I want to say like just, uh, just like two-by-fours. Okay. But, 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 Wall brackets. Yeah, right, with brackets okay. and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what I've done is very carefully taken just a pile of crap that I've accumulated over the last year and a half. I think I'm really going to do the right thing. Clean this mess up. It was like that game where you where you put one thing on top of another thing on top of another thing with a little piece of wood. Jenga. What? Jenga. You know them all. Jenga. 30 okay. points. And you know the deal is like if you pull out the one that's three off the bottom right. and if they all don't fall down or something you win. Yeah, right. and so well, you've got a little There's a precarious pile of crap mm -hmm. on the very top shelf. Right. Now, if I... At the very top is your vintage era Japanese sword. Now, if, if I don't... <laughs> if I don't take the lazy way out, this is not a problem. Right. If I your, simply, skates, your ice skates are up on the very top. If, if I simply turn to my left and, and get the ladder that's right there... Right, very handy. All I gotta do is... I, mean, I just gotta put it against the wall. Right, the pruning shears are up at the very top level. Take three steps... I'll pick this stuff off the top of the shelves uh -huh. and take the shelves apart. <laughs> I now, can just get those hedge trimmers that I put up at the top. Now, let me tell you how lazy I am. I'll also see if I can adequately describe this to you. Mm. This, this, this is a shelving unit that almost looks like a, a walk-in closet. Okay. There are two walls that go from floor to ceiling. Mm -hmm. And then there's a top on it. And there's, there's, a, there's another big piece of wood in the middle. Mm -hmm. And what I've done is I've hollowed the whole thing out. You're right. trying to reach your broken glass collection. It's on the very top. <laughs> you're connected to the ice. You're, you're struggling at the very top, 12 feet above your head, to reach the antique bottles. Okay, now, here's what, here's what, it, here's what it looks like. See if you can help me describe this. At this point, this is all I have. Right. All the stuff is up on t top of here. Okay. This is all hollow in here. Can you see this? How, how yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You've got it. Yeah. You got it's shelving. You've got it like a shelf with a, at the now, very highest part is where you stack all your stuff. Now all of the shelves that that go inside here, I have dismantled and taken everything off. But there's a huge pile of crap up on top. So you've right. taken the shelves apart prior to getting the stuff off the top. Right. Now okay. what I should have done was gotten a ladder, uh -huh. climbed up here. Taking all this crap off the top, right. then taking the things apart. Yeah. No, I that'd be the logical approach. You know, I thought I could do. What? Mm. Being that I've taken all these shelves out, I am adept enough, and I am coordinated enough that what I can do is actually, because I'm lazy, lift the entire shelving unit out, holding it right on my on my hands and on my shoulders. Level. With three stooges. Sorry, yeah. Aram, Aram. I mean, uh, I'm, I don't know how to describe this. No, I know. You're say. trying to balance. So you're, you're doing like a circus act yes, when you could just get the stuff off there and move. Why? Are you moving the shelves out of the garage? Is that the plan? Yes. You're going to make more room in the garage. Correct. And you're going to, you know, do the clean this you know, house thing, get to get rid of the crap. Here's the best way I can describe this. It's like uh, on, a, on a little kid's uh, bedroom set. Right. Like if a little kid has a desk unit and there's like a little uh, thing for a little bookshelf right. that goes on top of it. I know, you know exactly you, what you're you know, talking you know, about. You think you could, if you took the shelves out, you could just put that thing on your shoulders yeah. and maybe... Yeah, okay. have well, a lot of times when you're moving furniture, it's the same thing. You take the drawers out of the furniture so you can move it easily. Well, think about The this. only difference is you've got a very lengthwise, you know, a very vertically unstable time heavy. You know, you're you're trying to move your collection of vintage Civil War cannonballs. <laughs> on, a much, <laughs> on a much larger scale, yes. I, I picked this thing up and right away 
I feel oh. it swaying. Sure. And, and you've like, lost at that point. I yeah. feel like one of those dickheads on America's Got Talent. Like I'm trying to, <laughs> like I'm trying to balance a, <laughs> a, <you> know, a <laughs> refrigerator on my chin or something. Right. Because as I'm realizing, you I didn't have a car in the garage. At no, no, no. The cars know. are both out of the garage. Well, at least you didn't do that. Now, I've got this big shelving unit, and I realize. I'm losing leverage. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm losing leverage big time. Right. And I'm not kidding you. Like something you would see on TV. You just shouldn't have left the 32-inch television up there. That's very frustrating. You're gonna you're gonna injure you yourself. Laugh. You laugh. What this was is, that? You, you, at this point? This is what correct happened. Correct me if I'm wrong. At this point, you don't realize what's up there on the top right. shelf now, because you know, have not I used am, the ladder. Right. I am holding the shelving unit like this. Right. Okay. So I'm underneath this like this going. Ah, there I got it. If I just go like this and I feel it, Tilting. I start. I start to lose. <laughs> yeah. I start to lose leverage. Yeah. Is the plan at any time to tilt it over when you get clear of the wall, or are you really going to try to like try lower to it like the moon landing go, go. onto a soft? What I'm going to try to do is go underneath the garage door right. with it, bring it outside. Uh -huh. You know, right. save myself a couple of trips. Right. <laughs> One move. I got exactly four. Four, four feet, four steps away, right. the thing started to sway yeah. and fell over on top of me. Ooh. Oh. So think of a bookshelf going, think of it uh, just like this, Mike. Right. This shelf here? Yeah. Oh, back. Forward, on, back. On top. But fortunately, it's hollow, so you're not yes. going to. You're, yeah. you're, yes, so it's, it's, not, it's not going to kill you, it's going to trap you. <laughs> and it's going to trap you here. Yeah. There you go. Did you ever figure out? Well, of course you did. What was the uh, what was the merchandise that you <laughs> that you were storing up in the rafters? Ah, uh, let me see. There were a pair of spikes, a pair of, <laughs> a pair of golf shoes. Uh -huh. uh, there, I think, were flares for a car uh, and a sea <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was. And so I'm laying on the I'm laying on the ground in my garage, and I'm thinking like. God, it really, I mean, I know you were kidding, right. but it really was like, Ugh! <laughs> Ugh! so I bust through this like the Incredible Hulk, right? And I look at my garage, and I swear to God, Jack, it looks like a tornado has gone through stuff everywhere because there is just all the crap that was on top is everywhere. Every piece of the shelf has has broken. Splinter. Did you finally? Were you finally able to get it cleaned up? Mm -hmm. Good for you. <laughs> Good for you. Did you throw all the crap out, or did you? How much of the stuff about by a percentage base of all the stuff you got? How much did you actually get rid of? Oh, all of it. You really? Uh, you cleaned it? You cleaned house? All of it. Oh, the right. eggs were broken. Absolutely all of it. <laughs> Most of it is in my uh, garage, uh, in my garbage right now. Fantastic a collection of glass Christmas ornaments. <laughs> we're not savable. I am not. I'm not too proud to tell you that uh, some of the stuff I. I, I I left for the less fortunate. Oh, did you really? Well, good for you. That's, that's very generous of you. Because they just happened to be in a parking lot that, <laughs> that no one was in. I'm sure they were. So there might just be a pile of stuff. There, there most definitely is. You one. know, that'll be it'll be used. It'll be used or traced. I'll look for the homeless guy in Gulf. It's called Advanced Auto Parts. Hey, very good. Big empty parking lot. It's a good thing. And somebody, I'm sure somebody's like, hey, that'll be somebody's windfall. Yeah, yeah somebody's sure. treasure island. You know where to look. I can, these fit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you, you don't know. Fit. You don't know how true you are. <laughs> look at these. Look at these fabulous wading boots. And you know what Janet said to me? I said because she said, "Wow, the garage looks great." I told her the whole thing. She said, "Where did you put all this stuff? Because I see this stuff that you, that you bagged up. Where's all the the other stuff?" I said, "Oh, genius. You know that advanced auto place, right?" So it back there and like unloaded it. Someone will clean it up. But it's a dump near a dumpster or just literally in the middle of the parking lot. Well, you know, in the middle of the parking lot. Is the reason for that because you don't want to deal with some of the rules that might be involved at like the local landfill, like separating the metal from the? Uh, yeah, from I've the been to, I've been to the uh, to the graveyard before, to yeah. the junkyard before. Right. It's a pain in the ass. Yeah, why do that when you can either you know steal a dumpster or put it in the middle of somebody's parking lot? Well, that's what I did. That's what I did. And then all she, usable stuff. Then yeah, and she said to me, she said, "That's awful." And I said, "Really? 
Is that as awful as when we used your mom's handicapped parking spot? <laughs> your mom's handicapped spot to, to get a good seat at the Redskins parking on Saturday? Everybody bends the rules a little bit sometimes. No. All right, so that's it. That's all. Injured myself. Other than that, things are fine. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad. Well, it sounded like you didn't have that bad a weekend. You had a good time at the ball no, game. I had a very good time at the baseball baseball game. In the basketball game. In the football game. Oh, that too. Football game. I had a bad time at the baseball game, and I wasn't even there. <laughs> How are you, friend? My wife is. <laughs> My condolences. We'll be right back. Number four, Arbitron rated. The Don and Mike show. Enough is enough. I have had it with these mother snakes on this mother plane. Everybody step in. Yeah. It's about to open some windows. Oh. I didn't know there was more there. They allow at least eight hours from bottle to throttle. Don Geronimo and Michael Mello. We do. Yeah. Hi there. Hello. Hi, Julia. Hello. Hi there. Hello. Hi. You can call Don and Mike anytime from anywhere in America. 877-365-3636. They're ready to believe you. Sounds like somebody's got a case of the moonbeams. It's a poppin' with the Don and Mike show. Oh, um, what did I want to mention? Oh, I know. I was just uh, talking to the guys about uh, my daughter, and uh, oh, what a great call I got from her over the weekend as well. Oh, good. On on Saturday, she called and uh, she was in the middle of her first ever fantasy football draft. She's oh. into it. That wow. she's uh. She's had to um, she's had to replace a member in the in 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 the league that my son-in-law is in. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. I think I know. Yeah. I <laughs> think somebody had to drop out of that league. Ah, so it's one down, and she is she getting? Uh, so did did she so play? She was, so, yeah, no, she uh, she she drafted her own team, and and she got a good goddamn team. Wow. That's good. So so good for her. When are we? Ha we're having our draft a week from Wednesday. Right? A week from Wednesday. Mm -hmm. uh, so so I called in. I called my other kid. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Bart, or as I call him now, my real kid. <laughs> <laughs> because because that, now that Amy's back in my life, a lot of times I I mention to someone, I say my daughter, and they'll say. Uh, wh where did she come from? And I, you know, so, so I often have to say, you know, Bart, my real kid, although Amy is not my, you know, not, not exactly, my real kid. Exactly, right. Uh, I understand. So I get off the phone with her and I think, well, you know what, I bet that her brother, and they like calling each other brother and sister, I bet that, that he would be interested in knowing this. So I call him up and I get his voicemail and he calls me back. And I tell him the news, and, you know, I'm just shooting the ass with him. And he says, all right, Pops, cool, I'll talk to you later. Right. And... Meanwhile, I'm I'm just curious about this whole thing with the deadline for classes and and the and the paying of the tuition. That was kind of big, mysterious. So, I thought over the weekend. Yeah, I'd had this discussion with with Bard, and I talked to Amy, and uh, what was I forgetting to ask Bard about? And and I went on the uh, website today to find out when when school starts. Mm -hmm. Turns out, uh, because, because this morning I saw not only are a lot of, here in D.C., a lot of the elementary schools opening up. Yeah, PG uh, County, I think, went back to school. Actually. I mean, like in the high schools, I mean, but the colleges, too. Colleges start, uh, most colleges, I think, are starting this week. Right? Well, bingo. So I call them up today. and <laughs> See how his first classes are going? I call him up today, and I said, hey, how's it going? And he said, it was about 1230. I had obviously awoken him. Oh, dear. He said, hey, Pop, what's happening? I said, um, you got anything special planned for today? And he said, what's today? I said, today is Monday. Now, keep in mind, I've been on the school's web webpage. I so that, you have a general idea of his well, I classes that, and when they're going to be? I know the classes in general started today. Yes, not everyone's, but <laughs> it's but, opening day. So... You know, I, I call him up, uh, and I, keep in mind, I've talked to him a couple of times over the weekend, and he's not mentioned a thing about it. Now, he's technically a junior this year, is that what he is? Yes. Okay, see, junior year is when you start to kind of, uh, you know, there's every possibility that he has got the junior schedule, which is that my first Monday was 6.30 p.m. Well, I, I you know, I didn't have I didn't have any idea, so right. I said to him, hey, uh, Barty, uh, today, what are you doing today? And he said, oh... Oh crap, Dan! I'm glad you called. Yeah. And 
I was ready to jump on his hat and say, you're going to be late for your first day of class? He said, he said, I am so glad you called. I said, Whew, okay, well, let's not let this happen again. He said, thank God. I said, what time is your first class? He said, uh, my classes don't start till Wednesday. There you go. I said, oh, I, I thought they started today. He said, no. He said, why would you think they started today? I said, uh, because I went on the website. He said, um... Why were you going on the website? <laughs> I said, Big Brother is said, watching. Uh, because you're in college and I'm your dad. He said, but I'm 21 and I told you I would handle it. And I said, yes, but I'm paying for it. Right. So I wanted to make sure that you would be on time for your first class. Yeah. He said, I will be on time for my first class. I said, okay, well then what is it that you're glad I woke you up about? And he said, I'm glad you called to wake me up because I have to go get in line for my Madden game. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. He, it's priority. He was, he, has, he structured his classes where every week now, Wednesday will be his first day to, to rock and roll. I think so. I think, it, I think he's, oh, I think he's skilled, doing, skilled man. I think man. he's doing a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday schedule. Yeah. Very oh. intense on Wednesday, Thursday, and oh. Friday. Grooming. That could be problematic. I well, mean, he's just in my his... opinion that the Friday is very. Your head's not in the game on Friday. Mike, I've been through this with him. Yeah, you know, I, I don't have the benefit of having gone to college like right. you. Right, but, I, my, my, but my, I know human nature. My junior and senior year, I prided myself. I thought on having the, uh, let us say, the social schedule. I was able to really, really hone it and refine it. I, I actually went down the line and explained, like in my junior year, what the schedule was. Sunday is football day, so you don't want to have uh, no. you know, you're going to have a few beers with uh, with the football game. So you don't want to come in till till later. Here was his rationale with me, right? Because I said to him, Marty, why wouldn't you either front load it, yeah. and get everything done right, right away, which way. is the absolute opposite of the way he does it, right? Or spread it out. He said, Oh, because Dad, uh, Friday I'll be focused because I know when I'm done on Friday. This is where I know I'm just being just <laughs> <having more. laughs> on Friday. I'm literally going to be focused for the weekend. Uh -huh. So I'm going to be really at my at my utmost. Going to pay the most attention. Right. Do the best work. Yeah, like I'm going to believe this. Wow. Friday is the. I, I wish I could said, agree. It's it's distraction day. Then he said Saturday, it's college football day. Right. Yes. Saturday night's the party night. Right. Sunday is the NFL day. You skipped one party night. Friday night. Okay. Yeah. What time does he have night classes on Friday? You got it. I, I, I think maybe so. Maybe like a seven thirty class on Man, Friday. Piece of cake. No problem. Anyway, he says Saturday's the, the college day. He'll either go to the game or he'll you know get drunk with his friends or whatever they do. Right. Sunday he's he watch he'll watch football all day. Right. Uh -huh. Monday he'll recover from Sunday. Right. And I said brilliant. And I said then why aren't the classes on Tuesday? Yeah. And and he said to me because Dad. I gotta have a little me time in there. <laughs> he is a riot. And I said to him, I said, this whole five year college thing is all me time. <laughs> I said, are you kidding me? So like Tuesday's gotta right. be what? Your day for, uh, for Calgon, Bath Oil Beach? Sure. And he says to me, uh, Dad, he loves playing this card with me. Dad, you don't know what it's like. Dad, listen, I know you've achieved a lot, but you don't know what college is like. I'm like, eh, listen, hold on. I know what college a is like. A little me time. College is me time. I said, I, said right. I know that you were supposed to go for four years, and now suddenly you're going for five years. That's fine with me. I, 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 don't, I don't mind that. But I think you should do your schedule a little differently. And he said, Dad, I am 21 now. Well, he knows what he's doing. If he's, he's in his junior year. He, he knows what it. works best for him. Yeah. Let me give it really briefly. I, I did the Monday only one class, 6.30 p.m. I had one class. It got me out in time to see Monday Night Football, which was a very, very big night. Then I had afternoon classes on Tuesday because Tuesday night was uh, Tuesday night at the tavern. We had Tuesday night at the tavern. The one day I had, again, late afternoon into the evening classes on Wednesday. Thursday was the only day of the week where I had a morning class. So Wednesday was the one night of the week where I, I didn't call it me time. I called it really just settle down. You really got to work. You got to take some stuff. And then it was back to the ramp up for the weekend. I don't believe I had, uh, I probably had one or two classes on Friday. And, and that was it. When you did the, uh, the evening classes, there's usually like a break halfway through. Like U.S. History, U.S. History, Monday nights at American University. Did you ever, uh, go out and pound beers during the break? No. 
See, I did that. No, no, because I mean, I, was there was there snake, was by the way. There I was throw. I drove by before class. During class, you know, you since, oh, during, during like halftime of the class. Exactly, and then come oh. back and do economics, and it was right. funny. Economics is funny when you're drunk, but you don't really absorb what they're teaching. <laughs> well, what time was your economics class where you got drunk? 7 p.m., and then we'd break at a little after 8 and reconvene at 8.30. <laughs> and what time did it go to? What was the end? 9.40 if we were late. Oh, oh, my God. That's yeah. horrible. So you're like a half hour to go pound. Exactly. And yeah, it, because the way it's structured in college is you have the two-day-a-week classes or you have the one-day-a-week classes, right? Or and three. The one, or, or three, right. if they're really short. But I see, they, we just had one day a week and two days a week. And the ones that were one day a week were the marathons because you go in there and you would get a break because you had to get it all in. But man, after Monday night was over, seriously, it was the hardest I would work all week as far as actually being in class. And, and the other bit of great news that he gave me, um, I, and I'm being facetious because I'm sure he's got it under control. After hearing about his scheduling, he said, and dad, I believe that I have pretty much got a job sewn up. I'm like, hey. So he's going to be working and going to school at the same time. Yep. Now this is you know mad money. Something he's thinking about. I said, "That's my boy. Yeah. That's what I want to hear." I said, "What's the job?" He said, "Well, friend of mine is opening up a liquor store." Oh. What wow. could go wrong? <laughs> wow. could possibly go wrong. Hi there, a friend of his. Now, oh, wow, a, a friend of his who owns owns the pizza owns. A pizza place right. or a couple of pizza places right. is branching out hey, and, cool. and opening a liquor store. It's yeah, two like, words, employee discount. It's not like Virginia where the state runs liquor sales. No, 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 absolutely anybody not. Anybody can sell it. Right. That's right. Okay. Make yeah. it, sell it. You don't need a license, Jack. In Virginia, you have to be very specific about <laughs> yes. what you buy. Mm -hmm. But down there, that well, isn't that the state that has all the kind of weird little baby bottle rules? They've changed that rule now, I yes. believe. Oh, good. Yeah. That's just so, in Bart. So he sounds like he's in control. He just hung up the phone and said, I couldn't be prouder. Yeah, of I said, course. said, I hope the schedule works out. I like a little me time. Good <laughs> job with the liquor store, <laughs> and good luck on Tuesdays. <laughs> yeah, it'll all be fine. <laughs> Tuesday, they just got to be me day. Me time. Well, it'll also be stuck. Study day. No, it won't. No, it will not no, be. Absolutely. Hello, Dynamite Show. Hey, this is Stacey. I just have some comments about the five-year plan. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Well, I did a five-and-a-half-year plan, and it worked out wonderfully. I graduated with about a 3875, drank my ad, oh, sorry, drank my butt off, yeah. and um, it was perfect. I'd be a much sleep more well-rounded well -rounded student. Do you sleep around? Uh... Well, yeah, that's part Did of. Did you you, you, know. you engaged in a lot of casual sex? You hoarded up. Yeah, you know what? A little bit of that. Were you, you the, know, were you the dorm the pump? Sorority. <laughs> no, I didn't live in the dorm. I lived in the sorority house. Were you oh. the dorm pump? Oh no, no, no. Good for you. Were you the sorority pump? No. What was, would you share your sorority with us? Yeah, it was Zeta Tau Alpha. Oh, well, you know what that, you know, you know know what that means in America. Right. That means uh, we like to sucky. <laughs> yeah. Did you were you were you in the hot sorority or were you in the average sorority? Oh God, no, I was in the hot sorority. Of course oh, you were. Like she's you. hot, party girl, piece of ass. And if she graduated with a three eight, she slept with every professor. You were a hey, sisters to what? What was the, what's what were you your fraternity? What were you sisters to? Which fraternity? Uh... Sigma Pi and Sigma Chi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Sigma Camel Toe. Mine started with a Sigma. Oh, yeah. Sigma Pi. Sigma Pi. Sigma. Sigma. Those are the guys that lit my chest hair on fire. Huh. Bastards. Careful. In my underwear. You know, and those are all, incidentally, all those hazing rituals for fraternities yep. are all homoerotic. I think oh, every yeah. single one of them. You That's know, it's like, point. now I didn't understand why I needed to get the wooden kitchen spoof up. Yeah. <laughs> but I right. do now. So, thank you, whore. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. There she goes. Homos. Sorority pump. <laughs> Coming to a theater near you. <laughs> Always an open mouth. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike show. Hello. Hey. Hey, what's up? Don, I think I could get a Cadillac from you. Will I come again? I think I could get a Cadillac from you. I know who your biological parents are. <laughs> <laughs> not, not again, because I, I offered for the longest time a, a caddy for my daddy. Find your real father, get a new Cadillac. Get a new Cadillac. Cadillac. Contest. Who, who are know. my, okay, who are my parents? Okay, I know two are your brothers and your dad. I haven't quite figured out who his mom is. All right, who, who are my brothers and my dad? <laughs> Harvey Firestein is your brother. <laughs> One of your brothers. <laughs> the voice. Thank Mike, you. Mike Fed Fred is your other brother. Right, Wolf Fred. Man Jack is your father. Wolf Man Jack. Okay. You know, unfortunately, Wolf Man Jack. That can't be proven because Wolf Man Jack is dead. 
Oh. I'm sorry, my voice would be beautiful today if Mike hadn't emotionally scarred me earlier. Just I, uh, I accept total responsibility, but none of the blame. Ouch. Where's my, where's just, my like, just like Richard Nixon. Ouch. I accept total responsibility, but none of the blame. Oh. Uh, Fortunately, there's always one part of me that's always working. Yeah. Let's see how this sounds. Ah. Wow. He's back, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. <laughs> Mm. Okay. Happy Monday, everybody. And then I like better than the smell of me. <laughs> that was true enjoyment right there. You <laughs> just lapped that one up. Well, Mike, that's the great thing about having our own studio. I know. Isn't it right? Yeah. Mm. It's yeah. your microphone. No one else will use that. That's my ass, all right. <laughs> Enjoy. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, baby. Okay, we got to uh, do this. We'll be right back. Number four, Arbitron Reading. The Don and Mike Show. Carrie Fisher. Carrie Fisher, ladies and gentlemen. So, as a nerd, you really are that in that gold bikini in Return of the Jedi, Jesus, God in heaven. Patton Oswald. Wow. Yeah. So good in that gold bikini. And then what happened? I mean, when they yelled cut, did you have a Vicodin eating contest with Chewbacca? <laughs> Take it from a nerd. Let the Wookiee win, okay? I feel very good about that joke because the message board I tried it out on gave me uh, L M F A O W uh, I H A P F E F double A double M I M D Y A M I R D M R F B N A, which is Brian Posehn will tell you means uh, laughing my figurative ass off while I have a Boba Fett action figure in my real ass and my mom yells at me to turn down my Rush Fly By Night album. There you go. Thank you. One never knows what a homosexual is about. Especially if you're listening to the Don and Mike show. Alright, thank you. Uh, Pat Oswald. Hey. We got some things to him on that uh, William Shatner Rose we should listen to. Part of our show on West One brought to you by insurance.com. Instant online car insurance. Well, let me see. We've got um, from the uh, William Shatner Rose last night on Comedy Central. And man, which, I should have watched that. Well, you just heard the funniest part. It really? Was it, was it, did it really suck that bad? It wasn't I bad. heard bad reviews that it wasn't that it good. Wasn't, it wasn't that it sucked that bad. It's just that there were only two or three parts that were halfway decent. Right. And Pat really wasn't on that much. And right. I got the impression that the comics didn't know him that well, <laughs> so they were hard-pressed to really dig. So know? it might have been one of those roasts where... The priority was just to get bodies up on the yeah, well, That's right. Here is uh, Sulu, though, and, right. and he was good. Okay. Look at all the talent we have in this room tonight. <laughs> Farrah Fawcett, He's a Betty bag. White, Lisa Lampanelli. It smells like <laughs> in here. <laughs> <laughs> now, now on Comedy Central, right? Even though that's a they regular beep cable, out. They, they did they did beep it out. Yeah, yep, good. they beeped it out. Uh, who, who, Jeffrey Ross, who's Jeffrey Ross? Jeffrey Ross is the one who had the best line at any roast of Rob Reiner when he looked down at Rob Reiner and he said, "Penny Marshall, what were, were you, you thinking? thinking? Okay, I wouldn't f Penny Marshall with Would Penny already... Marshall's D. All right, I remember it. Thank right, you, Mike. Right. Here he is now. He he had the best fat jokes. Okay. Look at you, Shatter. You have let yourself boldly go. <laughs> <laughs> He's the best. <laughs> when did you go from Captain Kirk to Captain Crunch? <laughs> <laughs> you look, T.J. Hooker and went to P.F. Chang. <laughs> <laughs> you work at Boston Legal or Boston Market? <laughs> If Scotty tried to beat me up now, you'd break the f transporter. <laughs> <laughs> he, I think that really is his his venue. So now here is Shatner retorting. And, he, and again, we're only playing this because our friend Pat Oswald, uh, you, you heard part of his right. shtick. Mm -hmm. Here's now Shatner coming back to everybody that's called him fat and says he has a toupee, blah, blah, blah. You see, I'm a humble man. <laughs> I don't like to toot my own horn. But the proudest moments of my career are the charitable works I've done to help the poor and the homeless and the indigent. Michelle and George know them as Star Trek's three through six. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. It's really great to see you. Because of our work together on the Bridge of the Fabled Enterprise, it broke a lot of stereotypes. Uh, not only did we take a chance and allow an Asian gentleman to drive, <laughs> we... we oh, that's cutting edge, Bill. We've been sitting in front of a large screen who didn't yell things at it. <laughs> He's using the curse delivery. No idea. Oh, no. It would be so rough on you tonight. They really ripped you a new one. I'm sure you'll find use for it. Though. That's good. I like that. Okay. But at least he had one good one in there. It was fun. Mm -hmm. So that's really all there was to that. Oh, so it wasn't even worth watching. No, not worth watching. Okay. And then the other thing that I thought was amazing this weekend was that uh, Snakes on a Plane didn't like make at least 25 million bucks i can't believe that i mean that is that movie has more hype than any movie this summer i don't get it and it's had the underground stuff going for more than a year now internet. with people with songs and websites and everything and do you think there's any possibility that people were simply afraid with everything that's going on they just didn't i mean there's been so much airline crap no, maybe comedy. they didn't want to see but but but, but really so, but they're not marketing it like that they're marketing it like it's just it's a scary movie that's but what that's, i thought i didn't like, think it was a comedy borderline no but it's it's, it's I mean, people have been laughing at it that's, yeah, it's, it's that one of those of that is supposed to be scary but right. you watch it with a bunch of friends when you're getting loaded and it's funny right. see i thought it was supposed to be a drama i didn't know it was supposed to have any comedic oh, no, uh, like over the top drama well, i think it's like batman okay right. i mean like right. my batman Batman, like TV right. Batman, right. you know. Right, Batman. Hello, Batman. Cesar Romero, get the snakes off the plane. It's campy, Batman. <laughs> Batman. So what was number one this week? It was Ricky Bobby number one, or was that one number one? No, it was uh, the, the, what do you call it? Snakes on a Plane was number one, if you include the preview uh, money from Just Thursday night. Buy a hair. And the one I want to see is the one uh, John Norman saw this weekend, uh, the one uh, with uh, Steve Carell. Little Miss Sunshine. And uh, Greg Kinnear, Little Miss Sunshine, which is not supposed to be knee-slapping funny, but it is supposed to be uh, funny in that kind of sideways way. All right, so nobody uh, nobody went to see that movie like I, like I thought they would. I, I don't know what's up with that. Yeah. Um, Oh, Sam Jackson. Uh, this just has to be, because that movie is out, uh, there's a website, uh, lovefilm.com, uh, uh -huh. and I guess what they did was they asked, who is the coolest actor of all time? The coolest actor of all yeah. time? Sam Jackson's number one. Really? Of all pulp, pulp Fiction. Right. All right, not bad. All right. Okay. Then you have Steve McQueen in Bullet. Yeah. Then you have Brad Pitt in Fight Club. I would have picked Edward Norton in Fight Club. Al Pacino in Carlito's Way. <laughs> he said it's one of those BS lists. They, all, they just yeah. threw things at a dartboard. Speaking of that, last night on HBO I watched, uh, what's the one with, uh, I, I mean, I saw it in the theater, the one with him and uh, Matthew McConaughey, where, where he, they're betting on football games. Oh, and, yeah, and oh you mean uh, Edward Norton? No, 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 Al Pacino. Two, oh, four, it was out in theaters for like half an hour. Two for the money. If you want to see Al Pacino doing an impression of somebody doing an impression of Al Pacino in Son of a Woman. Is he uh, doing like the great ass type of style? Is that yeah, the way he does yeah, it? Right? Yeah, the way whole thing is, yeah. you're my winner! Mm -hmm. You pick the winning games and you give me the heart attack! <laughs> Hoo -ah! Well, that Ooh, movie, might as well be blind. Didn't that, that movie, movie tank at the box office? Yeah, yeah. It, did. it did. And then meanwhile, Matthew McConaughey is doing his regular thing. Hello, Ellie. <laughs> I'm just Mr. Cool. In fact, he has a man alive. Okay, so that is, it's Jack Nicholson, it's Paul Newman, it's uh, Mickey Rourke. You think Mickey Rourke was scary in Sin City? In his day, I think he was pretty cool. Oh, Five enough. minutes. Yeah. I know there's uh, one more thing that I, uh, we got to get right to buzz today. Gosh, what happened to the show today, Mike? Oh, I have no oh. idea, Don. What happened to the show? No, no idea. <laughs> no idea. I think it's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, fat ass. <laughs> uh, Rosie O'Donnell. Is she destined for a short run on The View? Yes. I went to her website today. Yeah. You always do that. Every I do. Day. Every day. I love going there. Yeah. I urge you to go read Rosie's blog. Oh. Ooh. Because it has some stuff about The View. Huh. Hog blogging. For instance, <laughs> here's what it says today. This is a haiku, uh -huh. which means a poem that does not have to rhyme. Okay. Right. I saw the new view promos, found myself in the position I loathe most, powerless. It will be hard for me not to be 
the boss. Oh, God. Thank it you. is already, and we have only just begun. Yeah, I bet go. Barbara Walters is excited about that. Yeah. <laughs> is, is not, I mean, Babs is the boss, right? Doesn't she own, uh, like, 80% oh, of that show or but something I, like that? She, yes, yeah, she does, but she also likes not being there. Okay, yeah. She likes working the, you know, the, uh, the Regis schedule where she's there like two days a week. All right. Do you think, don't you think there's a chance that maybe this type of thing is hype? That mm. she's trying to yeah, well, uh, generate some in kind the of bathroom buzz? bathroom that says only employees can use it. Welcome to The View. Here's Rosie O'Donnell with her comments of the day. I, I think that that's how the show's going to be. I, I think that they've hired her to be like, uh, Meredith Vieira was the captain of the old one. Okay, so they want her to be. Or do they want her to fight? No, even when Barbara Walters was on the show, Meredith Vieira would always start off the show. Right. Um, I don't, do they want her to fight? I don't know. We need some help. I'll get it. <laughs> With an ensemble show, somebody's got to be the spark. I think uh, he's going to take me for a ride in it. Uh, wouldn't it be great the first day of The View if she did that voice? Yes, I'm okay. I'm okay because I'm the sheriff. <laughs> and, and, you know, if she had a real sense of humor, she'd do it like that. Open your eyeballs and you can see that. He's a little bit off a of Hello? Hello? Imagine what Elizabeth Hasselbeck would do when that would happen. You know, she'd say, what's the matter with you? Why are you talking like this? How come you're not being your normal rosy self? Hello? 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 <laughs> Hello, guys. Hey, Tom. Hi, Tom. Hey, what? Hi, Tom. I'm hearing you. Watch it. <laughs> Hello? Can you hear me? Hello, who's this? <laughs> I love you. I have to go. I have to go catch a bus. Hey, watch it. Uh, no. Yes, you watch it. Would you like would you like a cookie? Chocolate flavor, very nutritious. <laughs> watch it. Oh, dear. Oh. You're weird. Oh. You watch it. <laughs> All this boring clothes. What, am I scaring you? Yes, who did? <laughs> I don't think it's right to throw dirt on somebody. <laughs> hey, did it, Charlie? Oh, dear. You effing idiot. You good to hell. Oh, boy. You're going to get him riled up You're now. getting along. Watch well. it. Are you an idiot? Are you a moron? No. Are you effing stupid? You're an effing stupid. Shut the F up. You Mind your own effing business. <laughs> Leave me the F alone. I hate you. <laughs> F you. Shut the F up. Watch your language. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna try to do that with me? No. Because I'll get all over you. No, you will not. I'll come down there and kick your little ass. You can suck this. Watch it. <laughs> when are you coming over so I can F you? <laughs> I can kick your ass if you want me to. Have you ever said no? No. <laughs> your behavior is outrageous and unacceptable. Watch it, guys. <laughs> you effing idiot. No, I'm not. You're an effing idiot, too. Tell me... A I think you are way out of control. You're out of control, too, buddy. You gonna try to do that with me? <laughs> no. Are you a drunk? No, you... Are you a prostitute? Are you a prostitute, too, You've been knucklehead? drinking today. <laughs> hey, watch it, knuckleheads. You can suck this. Watch it. You like attention, don't you? No, you watch it. God, oh, you're ugly. No, you watch it. Oh, no, you can watch it suck again. this. All right, no. Watch it. No, don't say okay. watch it anymore. Right. Bye now, Tom. What? Watch Dude, it. We gotta go. Tom, take us to break. Got a mic, gonna break. Hey. Go to the hippopotamus! Ah. Okay, bye. <laughs> Number four, Arbitron Rating. The Don and Mike Trail. Ah! Next Wednesday at 8 p.m., John and Mike and their whole wacky crew invade Hooters on Rockville Pike. Come on out for some wings and perhaps a breast. Don't miss John and Mike's triumphant Maryland debut. You'll wish that the night would never end. And who knows, maybe it won't. The John and Mike Reno style show. Hooters and Rockville. That's how I roll. See you next Wednesday. What's the word from Planet Crackpot? The Don and Mike Show. Beyond AM, beyond FM, there's BM with Don Geronimo and Michael Miller. Buzz's News tonight brought to you by Ford. Bold moves. Mike asked me a moment ago if I was going to be watching the game tonight, the Monday night game. Right. Reggie Bush, yeah, New Orleans Saints, you bet. But more importantly, Mike, tonight I'll be cracking open my Madden 07. Oh, you got it? Which would be 
waiting for me when I get home. Oh, good, good, good. Crack that baby open. I didn't know this was the debut day. Oh, yeah, tomorrow is uh, Blue Flu Day. Oh, right? yeah, baby. So listen to what you did to me today. Did I really do it? Is it solely my responsibility? I'm feeling horrible about that. This right here? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Really? I mean, really, that's how I react emotionally when something really gets me going. Stress can do that to the vocal cords. Uh, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> you guys so are if, so full of it. So if I'm sick tomorrow, right. mm -hmm. wink, wink, it's because I'm playing Madden. Okay. Uh, no, I'll, I'll be here. Of course I'll be here. Okay. Well, you know, I, you know, it's, uh, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I'm really feeling, really, I feel now, I got the Irish going now, and it sucks. It totally sucks. No, Why? Oh, no, you'll be happy to know. I know it'll please you that I'm guilt-ridden over your throat here you know i didn't mean oh, to oh uh, bfd well I mean, I, it, it, it you know, comes and it goes it just, you know um, you know me and irish guilt right. it was uh, conditioned you know it was conditioned in the uh, in my household and, uh, and my mom would walk around the kitchen you know and something like that when she was sick and she goes i'm fine i'm fine strictly stressed that's all it is <laughs> it'll be on the website today yeah it's our audio highlight <laughs> sure is <laughs> anyway here now is uh <clears throat> Here now is Buzz. Hi. Here now is Buzz. I'll be playing my video game tonight. <laughs> what if you don't have it? I really hope you get it tonight. What if it is? Is there some chance that uh, it might not be oh, there? Don't even say Then that. I might show up at your restaurant. <laughs> I won't. Hey, look around, Cafe. Oh, oh, God. Yeah, the one I still have. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Very good. Hi, Buzz. Hi, Don and Mike. Uh, he says he was alone with Jean Benet Ramsey when she accidentally died. And even though there's an increasing doubt about his story, John Carr is every bit the freak show he appears to I'll be. I'll tell you this about this guy. Yes. Not only did I call this about this guy, yes. I want to say this also. He'd make a beautiful check. I think so. He wanted to be a check. He He'd make so. a beautiful check. Did anybody see the, the frenzy when the news stations got hold of the fact that the guy was drinking champagne? And it and became first bigger, class I mean, or business class. Oh my God! They went nuts, and every it was every station. He was drinking champagne. Yeah, at a cost of the taxpayers of about twenty four hundred dollars. If they'd flown him coach, it would have been about seven hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah. No. you know. I, but seriously, I think he would have get it. He might have gotten his ass kicked in coach. To be honest about it, I mean, I don't give a crap if the guy's in business or, or coach. How, how come he didn't have uh, cuffs. cuffs on? Cuff him. I, I, don't, don't, I totally don't understand that. Metal, maybe it's, it's such a hassle of the metal detector. But don't you think the federal marshals were looking at the guy and going, what, what's he going to do? Seriously. Yeah. Well, right. I mean, right. he looked... He, he, he he was, you're not intimidated by him, Mike? <laughs> he, he appears to be easily restrained. He looks like Clay Aiken on steroids. Right. Yeah. yeah. He was well covered, though, uh, by professionals. Right. I think he could probably put a handcuff on his neck. And yes, that is the latest. He was arrested while visiting a clinic that specializes in sex change operations. He got his facial hair removed. Sex change. According to one report. Yes, he had treatment here, says a clinic spokesman. He was a patient here a number of times. It's a twist in the story, even for a guy who's more than just a little fascinated with little girls. But today, the 41-year-old former school teacher's back in the U.S., escorted here, as you said, without handcuffs. In he looks good for 41. <laughs> in business class. And, and, and time out. Yes? I know that we live in an age where we can't believe what we see on CSI. Right. But I did definitely read today on the intro that, that the first thing they did was give him the old swabber Rudy. Right. Yeah, so why don't we have the results? How long does it... I, I mean, are, are we living in that world like where, where real cops say... No, I don't you, think so. You watch too much TV to get the results that I, quickly. Yeah, no, I do agree with that because I think that's it just takes a long time. And yeah. they say they have to go... You know, all the forensic guys like that that, that creepy uh, Dr. Michael Baden, yes. the guy that's on that show, Autopsy, he was all over everything. And he's talking about the fact that they need two, maybe even three well, now independent on, labs to confirm this excuse DNA. Excuse me, but on CSI, William Peterson just picks something up, <laughs> gets his little eyedropper yeah, out, and immediately, right it. It, if it turns pink, right. it means guilty. He's done. It's almost like a pregnancy test. And yeah. they always swab. They do the mouth swab. Right. Right. Horatio does more of the mouth swabs than, uh, than, than William Peterson Well, that's does. on CSI Miami. Yeah, that happens a little slower. <laughs> <laughs> well, right now, uh, this guy, John Carr, uh, is meeting with lawyers in Buzz, Los Angeles. Yeah. Excuse me. Would you please use him... Uh, as a three-named person, would you please refer to him as the three-named person? What's his middle name? John Vicky Carr. No, I think it's David. Isn't <laughs> or Mark. I don't remember. I discarded. Why don't we I... give? All right, if you don't have the the name handy, then give him one of the former mass murderers. How about members. Leroy? How about John Wayne Carr? There you go, John Wayne Carr. I like that. John Wilkes Carr. John Wilkes Carr. <laughs> yeah, because we don't want to invoke the name John Wayne. Where did you find these Packer Woods? No. Sirhan, Sirhan Carr. There's always somebody looking for some. 
<laughs> anyway, anyway, he, he should be one of the three named people because he's, he's a, a nutty. I'll be sure and include. Who else will be a blab? Middle <laughs> name in future reports. That's report. one of the rules that once you commit a big big crime, you God get the three it. names. We That's have. Right. What did you say? I you said, said you know. And she was a three named one too. Yeah. What is it, Robbie? Mark. Yeah, right. John. Ma See right here, Buzz, on Mark, USA that's Today. That's what I said, yeah. USA Today, which is a newspaper of note. Right. <laughs> oh, that's another it thing. replaces grit, actually. <laughs> I rewatched, I, I know we're totally off topic, but over the weekend, yeah. I made Janet sit down and rewatch that Mike Wallace thing mm -hmm. with the president oh. of, uh, of Iran right. that we had talked about a couple of weeks ago because I thought it was very interesting. Mike Wallace did a good job. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we didn't mention, and I know you, you'll agree with me on this, <laughs> he's reading some quote that the president of Iran gave mm -hmm. to, uh, about how the Holocaust never happened. Right. right. And he says to the guy, and then says in the voiceover, of course, he did give a one interview to USA Today. <laughs> yeah, he took us down to it. Which is almost like, he did give a, an interview yes. to USA Today. <laughs> To my weekly reader, not a not a real newspaper. He had a previous interview that was published in a comic book. <laughs> anyway, on USA Today, right here, right by Tiger Woods, they got him right there, John Mark Carr. They That's gave him right. the three name treatment. And he is, I tell you, whether you know, and the whole thing is, he's either a horrible killer. Or just a sick guy that that wanted attention, but either way, he is one scary guy. To you look you at. were talking about the delay with the DNA test. Uh, John Mark Carr met with lawyers in Los Thank Angeles you, today, and if he fights extradition, which he may, uh, this will delay the entire process another couple of weeks. Just thought you should know. On the flight to L.A., as we mentioned, they even let him dine with a metal knife and fork on shrimp and pate and roast duck and pizza and chocolate cake and champagne and chardonnay and beer. Apparently, no, no, he, apparently didn't, he didn't really have all of those things. He had he? all of those things and more. But on the metal fork, they yeah. put a cork on it. There you go. Much <laughs> safer. <laughs> <Rick Rupert. laughs> apparently, the point of this... May I go to the bathroom? <laughs> that, taxpayers are... Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Taxpayers are unhappy, but the point of this, and experts seem to agree, this is a good way to get a guy to open up to investigators. He was also in a genital cuff. Uh, but as I also oh. mentioned, he's now in a Los Angeles, Angeles jail cell where a spokesman promises, quote, he won't get king crab, I'll tell you that. Mm -hmm. oh. uh, airport security was... Hey, talking job. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. He'll get crabs, all right. <laughs> airport security would still prefer that women not wear gel padded bras or bring them in carry-on luggage. Me too. I, I you would know why? prefer, yeah, women should wear those anyway. But yeah, right. you just lie. We don't, we don't go around with pretend penises in our pants. Well, speak for yourself. <laughs> uh, the screeners the screeners won't be feeling you up. Uh, they, they're not looking for that after all. TSA, which almost seems to stand for something else here, says it won't be checking to see if you're wearing gel pads up there. The reason some women have had surgery, they wear them as replacements. Quoting a TSA spokesman, we recognize it's a sensitive issue. They still won't let gel insoles for your shoes on board or anything else that's gelling for that matter. Now that's going to kill that ad campaign. And from what I've read, Buzz, nipples are actually less sensitive. You'll find it all under travel tips at the TSA.gov website. An industry spokesman describes the gel bra market as, and I quote, huge. Don't you have sensitive nipples? I do. Extremely, extremely sensitive. Are your nipples sensitive? Uh, they can feel you talking about them. No. Mine aren't. No, mine, mine are not either. They're not as, in fact, I don't like them touched or played with. Rob? Well, I'll stop playing with them. <laughs> you just got to tell me, Mike. <laughs> and now everybody's nervous about airport restrooms, and I'll tell you about that when we come back. Why? Well, I'll tell you about oh, that when we okay, come back. I understand the team. <laughs> okay, we'll be right Number back. Number four, Arbitron Reading. The Don and Mike Show. Really. What's the word from Planet Crackpot? The Don and Mike Show. Victims of laxative abuse. Don Geronimo and Michael Mera. I want to put the uh, call out right now to uh, Super Dave from Baltimore. Super Dave, please contact us either on the telephone or on our website. Email at the Donovan website dot com. Two things that we need from Super Dave. We like from Super Dave. Right. One. Oh, Rob, how's your head? I think we might need a letter because remember, I mean, if the shower's not working at the boarding house, you know the phone's not. Oh, man, that's right. And I hope his uh, forehead that's all bloody from the uh, kiddie pool. Well, we need him to uh, we need him to, to come down. Yeah. We, we want to dress him up as a rabbi, mm -hmm. get him out with a bullhorn. Right. You know, Jews for, for, for Mel Gibson. Right? Isn't it, uh, wasn't it going to be I Forgive Mel Gibson? Yeah. Isn't that his, uh, his yeah. sandwich board? Would you join me? Yes. 
Paul, if you forgive Mel Gibson. We'll let him be out there when he's doing that. And also, he'd be a great guest for Match Game. Oh, oh I yeah. think he'd be the yeah. best wild card ever. I think he'd be fantastic. So, Super Dave, you got to call us. Come Please. on, Super Dave. you got to do it. Now here's Buzz. All right. Hi, Hi Buzz. Mike. Uh, airplane restrooms did cause a little nervousness over the weekend. An American flight from Dallas to Miami made an emergency landing in Orlando after flight attendants noticed two restrooms in the rear of the plane had been locked for quite a while. Oh, look out! Upon landing, they brought on the dogs, the doors were opened, uh, there was no one inside. A Delta flight made an emergency landing in San Antonio after a flight attendant noticed uh, loose ceiling tiles in a restroom after one man had spent a lot of time in there. Hey, maybe it was me. All the passengers... You know what I mean? You work it? Oh, you mean you, you, broke you the dislodged tiles. the tiles? That's right. And then I sat and really worked it. Not too loose. <laughs> All the passengers and all the luggage were removed from the plane, which was ceiling tiles. Maybe one of our engineers was in there. <laughs> to a far, far corner. Yeah, they got a couple missing. Mm -hmm. uh, the airplane was moved to a far corner of the airport. Nothing was found. The man, however, who spent a lot of time in the restroom, is still being questioned. I'll explain both of those comments very quickly to you, the listener who may not know. Okay. A long time ago, I pleasured myself and actually hit the ceiling. Right, when you were in a real state of, uh, of uh, horny energy. And at the last station Mike and I worked at, mm -hmm. when they cleaned out the chief engineer's office, they discovered a stash of horrible pornography that was hidden in the drop ceiling. Drop ceiling. Right. Ancient, right? Yes. It was old. Yeah. Like, like Black Dahlia. You know, and that, that rumor about Blue Boy, uh -huh. not true. Not true Thank at all. God. It was all straight hetero porno. Hetero porn. Thank you. Let's bury that. Let's bury that, can't we? Where's my porn? In Britain, airline passengers staged a mutiny and refused to let their flight take off until two Arab-speaking Asians were removed from the plane. Shoot up. Security officials say the men were double-checked before being allowed to board. I'm leaving the applause. But when word about the men spread through the 150 passengers, some refused to board and others who had boarded got back off. They told the crew they were afla afraid to fly with those guys. Pilot websites indicate this was not an isolated incident. Other passengers on other flights have left or refused to board for exactly the same reason. Now, what's so wrong with that? I don't think what's there's anything so wrong, wrong did with I, that. Did I say don't, wrong? I don't think there's anything one, wrong. One plane for them, one plane for us. <laughs> <laughs> one plane just for Asians speaking Arabic? Now, if, you know, I plan to fly in the next uh, couple of weeks, yeah. and I have a late night flight, and... Uh, I'm going to be in the kind of condition where I'm going to be a lot more accepting of my fellow men. <laughs> I'm just going to say, I'll drink to that. <laughs> What's all this fuss about? <laughs> Put him on. Come on, why are you hanging him? If you've ever given someone a helicopter or just want to know what one is, be here when we return. Is that sex thing? Is that a sex thing, Buzz? It could be sex related. Yeah, it is a sex thing. Has he told you about his camping trip yet? No. Oh, okay. this weekend, another, another swinging. Oh, we got the whole week to talk about him. Ah, yeah. oh, it's plenty of time. Yeah. Later. Unless the Red Sox lose again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, that's going to take a long time. Oh, my voice. Oh, Jesus. Hi, Don. <laughs> oh. I'm sick, Charlie. <laughs> sick, smart Charlie. Charlie feels good today. Hi, Molly. Hi, Don. Oh, Sorry about Mike and your voice. <laughs> Number four, Arbitron Rated. The Don and Mike yeah. Show. Gosh, I hate to interrupt. It's all been so, it's all been so incredibly fascinating and, and entertaining and instructive. Really, the time has just flown by. <laughs> Don and Mike show. And indestructible. Here's Don and Mike to talk for you. And now here is Guy Birdley. Hi, Guy. Hi, Don and Mike. Hi, Buzz. Finally, yes, it's called a helicopter when you twirl your thing around in someone's face. In Ontario, a young man's going to jail for that. Uh, 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 oh, uh, speaking of uh, young men, Super Dave called during the break. Oh, good. good. He's available? When's he coming down, Robbie? Someday this week. We're hoping Wednesday, but yeah. he needs money. You know, I hate to say this, but you might want to check into that microphone if you plan on speaking tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. On the radio. I shall. We tried okay. to adjust it on Oh, okay. Well, I'm glad he's coming down. My gears is okay even if you try to pretend. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, 60 days this kid is getting for waving his thing around in the faces of two other boys at a teen rehab center in Ontario. <laughs> Prosecutor says such behavior, behavior is quite disturbing and degrading to the victim. One of the victims says 
Happens all the time. For the helicopter. In Nepal, when they need rain for their crops, the women plow the fields in the nude. Yeah. Yeah. They do this to appease the gods. The gods have always enjoyed naked women. The reason the women keep doing this can be summed up in what happened in Nepal this past week. After a good naked plowing, it rained. They could still use some more rain. <laughs> Come to think of it, so could we. Yeah, plow. Ladies, mm -hmm. I'm Buzz Burbank hey, okay. on the Don and Mike Show. Sorry, we're out of time. No! I get your sex references, Buzz. Sex <laughs> references. <laughs> we gotta go. We'll see you tomorrow with a new episode. Good day to you, sir. 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 And you, high fidelity. <laughs> <laughs> I will see you tomorrow, everybody. Number four, Arbitron rated. The Don and Mike Show. <laughs>